colleagues um, present. Thank you. She's on the platform, Chair. See, Mr. Fring, Chair. Yeah, I saw him earlier. Yeah, Chair, and um, Mr. Swaku. Good morning, Chair, and good morning, colleagues. Morning, Honorable Fring. Uh, Chair, are you yeah, able Chair. to hear me? Yes, we are honorable thing and good morning to honorable Swaku. Chair, have load shedding, so you may not be able to, to confirm his is on the platform chair, Mr. McPherson. Okay, yes, we saw he did uh, post a message. Yeah. So they, 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 those are the members on the platform at the moment, chair. So we can proceed with, with other members may join us during the course Secretary, of the Secretary, I'm, I'm on the Mr. Malamatia. Sorry, chair. No, thanks, thanks. I just wanted to indicate I'm in the process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning, Good Good morning. morning Chair. It's uh, Member Mulder speaking. I'm also on the platform. Good morning, Honorable Mulder. We can proceed. We can proceed, Chair, with the, with, with the agenda, Chair. Yeah. Oh, my apologies. Good morning, Chair. Good morning. Good morning, Honorable Member. Uh, there we have the agenda. Can we have then, um, we've uh, declared the meeting open and caught it, and everyone is welcome. Our stakeholders and members of the public on the platform, uh, the department and PC members. Uh, can we check whether there are any apologies, uh, Honorable um, PC Secretary? Um, Chair, there's an apology from Mr. McPherson. You will, not Mr. McPherson, my apologies, Mr. Cutler. You will join the meeting with the, in, in the next 10 minutes, Chair. And, and we have no other apologies at the moment, Chair. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, can we have a move and a seconder for the adoption of the agenda as tabled, which uh, consists of engagement with the DTIC and stakeholders? Uh, with regard to the implementation of the South African Sugar Value Mass uh, Value uh, Chain Master Plan, and then deliberations uh, on that um, engagement, um, can I have a move and a seconder for the adoption of the agenda. Sorry, Chair. Before you can uh, adopt the agenda, Honourable Tswaku. I'm, I'm sorry, Chair. Just um, we're having some kind of a uh, problem with the network. Uh, I can't switch the, the, the video on. I, I apologize okay. for that. Okay. Uh, so, Chair, I just wanted to, to, to check, man. I This, uh, you know, the, the presentation, I, I actually requested it uh, yesterday night from from the secretary. I don't know when was it sent, you know, to the members. I don't know, maybe uh, when were we supposed to get, you know, this, uh, you know, the presentation. So, I'm actually... I'm actually get, getting worried because most of the, the documents, I'm either getting them like very late at night or in, in the morning. So, and the preparation for me, it actually makes it very difficult. And for example, you, you've ruled even last time that the, all you know, the document for the copyrights and all of that must be sent to me. I don't even have anything now, you know? So I don't know whether maybe, um, it's a it's a it's a pure mistake or maybe the guys are maybe they they are forgetting about me or something like that so um i would like to urge man the, the guys please uh, the secretary and the researchers and please can they send you know make sure that i'm i'm on the list you know the distribution list and my staff i get my my staff on time for the okay. preparation because i take the meeting very serious i i, I prepare for it Okay, thank you very much for that, um, for letting to us to that. I know that the committee secretary normally sends out presentations before the time, and then on the day of the of the of the the meeting, they send it again so that it's at the top of the list of correspondence in the members' inboxes. But I will ask the secretary to sort out. Maybe there are some. Um, details of yours that they don't have because we have all received the, the presentations in good time. 
but um, I think we will uh, uh, attempt to sort it out so that um, so that you receive all documents uh, timelessly. Um, Honorable Mutau. Thanks, Chair. I move for adoption of the agenda. Thank you very much. Honorable Moatse. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I second the move of the adoption of the agenda. Thank you very much. Then as we go into our main agenda items, the South African sugar value uh, chain master plan was finalized in 2020 uh, to revitalize the industry and to address the ongoing challenges for various stakeholders along the value chain. The cane growers and sugar millers had been plagued by cheaper imports, the impact of the uh, tax on sugary beverages and various challenges affecting developing uh, cane growers and thus the effective transformation of the industry. So the purpose of today's meeting is to engage the DTIC and stakeholders who are on the platform uh, to determine progress and outcomes of the implementation of the South African value chain mass, sugar value chain master plan. Um, over to you, the delegation from the department is led by the minister. Over to you, minister. Uh, very good uh, morning to you, Chairperson, and to all the honourable members of the committee. I'd also like to uh, uh, to uh, greet the uh, staff of uh, the Portfolio Committee. A particularly warm uh, welcome to all the stakeholders of the uh, uh, sugar industry who are present here today uh, from uh, the different segments of the value chain. And I'd like to greet uh, the, uh, the uh, members of the department, the officials of the department who are here present today. Jefferson, may I start by thanking the committee very much for this opportunity for uh, some engagement between the stakeholders uh, uh, through the work that the DTIC has been doing uh, and the portfolio committee. I uh, should indicate, uh, Chairperson, uh, that uh, the Sugar Master Plan is uh, co-driven by uh, the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development led by Minister Didiza, Toko Didiza, and ourselves. And uh, the, um, uh, I want to appreciate the enormous work that Minister Didiza and her team puts in uh, to help uh, keep the uh, industry uh, going and uh, the work that she does on the master plan. She is unable to join us today, but I, I thought uh, we should acknowledge her work. I also want to indicate, Chairperson, as um, my office had uh, indicated to the chair, that uh, I have been delegated responsibilities linked to the uh, mining in Daba, uh, which is taking place with investors uh, in Cape Town. So I am currently joining the portfolio committee from the mining in Daba. And Deputy Minister Gina will be leading the DTIC and the stakeholder team in today's meeting. And my remarks are therefore on behalf of Minister, uh, Deputy Minister Gina and, uh, and myself. I also want to indicate, uh, Chairperson, uh, that um, uh, Deputy Director General Lerato Mataboche will be leading the actual presentation, taking the committee through the PowerPoint and um, <clears throat> uh, I am uh, sorry uh, uh, that uh, I am uh, uh, not able to, to be here for the entire period, but uh, there's, a, there's an excellent team that will be available. Chairperson, in the chat, I see that uh, Dr. Siabonga Madlala, the chair of SAVDA, uh, was previously seeking to be uh, admitted to the meeting, and I wonder if um, he has been 
uh, given the the opportunity to join us. Uh, if he's not, I would appreciate if through the parliamentary staff he would be able to do so. Uh, Chairperson, the uh, basic uh, storyline that we wanted to convey today is one that uh, we'll, we'll try to deal with in a little bit more detail in the course of the, the discussion. But really, it's about the, the partnership in which an industry that uh, is a very important industry in the South African economy is able to work together. Uh, the different parts of that value chain works together, and that government facilitates and supports uh, all of the elements of the value chain's development. And where there are trade-offs and there are some complexities that we manage it as best we can with the intention to try to drive investment, uh, job creation, growth and transformation. So what we, we think would be really helpful for the committee, Chairperson, is I'll, I'll make a few really broad introductory remarks and that um, we, uh, uh, Deputy Minister Gina then uh, uh, coordinates the inputs from there. After the department puts forward a number of slides, which the department I know will go through relatively rapidly, uh, the, we then ask, uh, I was alerted that the committee was particularly interested in the position uh, that uh, uh, the industry finds itself in at farming level given that the master plan's genesis, the origin of the master plan, was to deal with the matters relating to farming. And in that context, Chairperson, uh, we're going to ask someone that um, uh, you will be very familiar with. And I think, um, among others, um, uh, Honorable uh, McPherson and Honorable Buyani will smile uh, to see uh, Ms. Joan Fubbs, uh, who used to be the chair of the Portfolio Committee in, an, in another uh, era, I should say. And we thought it would be very helpful for Ms. Fubbs on behalf of the industry to set out some, to make some remarks on the, the partnership as uh, uh, SASA and the industry sees it. We'd also like, because one of the particular issues that the committee has asked us uh, in the past, quite specifically on his transformation. So we thought we should um, specifically ask uh, Dr. Siabonga Matlala, the chairperson of SAFDA, to make a few remarks. And time permitting and subject to the chair's guidance, uh, we should ask uh, Thomas Funk of the cane growers to also make some remarks. Uh, if time permits, then one of the millers could also be invited. And that would then represent the primary production in the industry, which I understand to be the main focus of the committee today. At future meetings of the committee, it would be helpful to give a, a particular space and to, to, to give opportunity for retailers and food producers uh, to also come in. But I understood the brief today as it was conveyed to me to be particularly a focus on the primary side, uh, primary production side of the value chain and would take such guidance chair as you uh, may wish to give on this one. So um, uh, Tsulu uh, uh, Mushi will be to, uh, uh, flighting the presentation and chair uh, with, with your permission, perhaps we can ask her to just start flighting it and I'll, I'll just make a few very general remarks and then hand over to Deputy Minister Gina and uh, Deputy DG Lerato Mataboche uh, to take it further. So the, this is an, an engagement um, with regards to the implementation of the Sugar Value Chain Master Plan. The next slide really just sets out the main areas uh, to recap what the master plan is about, the context, the achievements, some progress, uh, key decisions, uh, blockages, and so on. 
Now, the um, uh, the next slide deals with uh, just some some broad reflections on where we are. And it makes the point that the sugar industry three years ago was faced with an existential crisis, meaning a crisis that goes to the very uh, continued existence of the sector with falling production, a massive surge in imports, and no common vision among stakeholders. So the sugar master plan was developed jointly with the industry, uh, government on, uh, working to facilitate a conversation between growers, millers, uh, labor, and users. And it was principally to try to get a common vision to say what it is that we want to do together and to, uh, to then set out a set of short and long-term commitments. And these short and long-term commitments uh, were intended to uh, provide space for the wider restructuring of the industry into a more inclusive, but also a more competitive and job-rich sector. We all recognized that it was going to be tough, that this was one of the most difficult industries uh, to try to put a master plan together. In fact, I recall, Chairperson, that um, early on when we ministered Didiza and I sat down and we were looking at what to do, uh, the advice was don't start with difficult, complex sectors with a master plan. Choose the easier ones so you can already see great potential for growth and then work on those first. But the reality was that farmers and many, many uh, 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 parts of the value chain were in significant pain at the time. And so we can't always choose the easiest ones. And we agreed then that we were going to tackle uh, the challenge of trying to get a common vision in the sector. And I must say, um, and complement the industry, that this it was a difficult discussion. It took uh, probably the better part of a year to really bed down all the key issues and um, a little bit more time for the formal signing uh, of the document. But really within um, probably eight months or so, the essential issues had been cracked. We recognized at the time that, that we needed undertakings because that was a master plan is about this. Everybody brings something. It's not where parties uh, ask for something, but where everybody comes and say, this is the commitment we prepare to make to try to achieve a common future. And so these difficult undertakings were required to shift the industry uh, from decline to potential growth. No one can guarantee growth. There are always many factors uh, uh, in, in respect of uh, a sector like this. It's a trade exposed sector. Uh, Chairperson, may I just pause? I see that there are some connectivity problems. I don't know if the, uh, the connectivity problems are uh, affecting everybody. There were some comments about um, not being able to hear, um, but I think let's continue. Uh, those who, who are lost on the network will then just rejoin us, Minister. Thank you very much, Chair. So, Chairperson, so I think uh, what this master plan about, uh, is about is that partnership. In the past, industry looked to government to, to do things. And we recognized that the toolbox that government had available was not sufficient. There wasn't enough in that toolbox to be able to, uh, to, to change the future of an industry. So we needed, everybody needed to bring something. So this slide just illustrates a few areas to protect volumes and jobs in the short term. Stakeholders are committed to a number of measures. Industry, for example, they said, look, we'll, we'll have price restraint. We're going to do everything in our power to keep pricing within uh, CPI levels over at least the short term, a couple, a, a few years that we're going to be able to, to hold uh, price rises. In return for that, industrial users and retailers said, if you can do that, 
we will work with our procurement offices to buy local sugar and we're going to increase the level of sh- uh, local sugar in this period uh, and um, and seek a greater level of uh, procurement from <clears throat> uh, smaller mills also, uh, smaller, smaller growers also. Government then said, if we take all of this into account, um, the commitments that the parties have made, uh, we would convey to National Treasury uh, the, the value of a more stable regulatory regime, for example, affecting the health protection levy, so that all parts of the industry can bring something uh, to uh, the future of the sector. Broadly speaking, the progress on short-term measures has been broadly successful. In other words, we've seen compared to the period uh, 2018 uh, and 2019, that there's been uh, on the whole a decline in the levels of uh, imports, that there's been a growth in the volume of sugar that has been uh, procured locally. But we recognize that's a short-term measure. It's hard in the long term to sustain those measures. So we try to address what are the, the, the opportunities in the long term. And the principal thing is a diversification strategy uh, to shifting the industry where sugar was produced uh, on the cane lands, uh, principally for the, f- the food industry to saying, can we shift to a wider base of products that are grown uh, on local farms? So that's the crop diversification and developing new value chains for sugar production, such as biofuels. And that was value chain diversification. Progress on the long-term measures have been, of course, hampered by volatility in the fuel market. Uh, Honorable members will recall that in 2020, we had an an, ap- an absolute collapse of the price of uh, oil. And that meant that in those circumstances, it was very difficult to properly cost the, uh, the, um, the price that would a, a biofuel strategy would impose on the society. What's the level of the subsidy, if any, that government would have to give in order to match the gap between the production price of biofuels and the market price of um, uh, petroleum, because they would they would be competing uh, products uh, uh, that would go into the uh, uh, carburetors and engines of vehicles. So the that area, and I think the next slide also deals with it a little bit more. Uh, has been hampered by the the lack of a stable oil price in this period. More recently, with um, the uh, the war in Ukraine, we've seen oil prices uh, rise to uh, to very significant levels. Now, when the oil price is very low, it means that the level of subsidy that would be required to make a biofuel strategy commercially viable is much higher. When the fuel price is very high, then what is required would be significantly lower. And this is what National Treasury and the Department of uh, Mineral Resources and Energy grapples with. From a DTIC and um, a Department of Agriculture point of view, we of course see the value of diversifying the value chain. Uh, there's been some crop diversification, particularly on larger farms. So we've seen some positives there, but obviously there's greater scope. The next slide uh, deals with local procurement in a little bit more detail. It says the biggest beverage makers have reported greater levels of local sugar inputs in their manufacturing processes. And the largest soft drink bottling company in uh, South Africa uh, has committed to take a larger share of their procurement from small-scale farmers. And they've really been driving the localization program, not only in sugar, but even in associated uh, areas. 
the major food producers have committed to maintaining and increasing the level of local sugar used in their products. And this was important even at the time when imported sugar was cheaper because it meant that we were saving jobs in farms. And a, large, a number of large retailers have reported close to 100% local sugar procurement in their own uh, businesses. And we've seen very good examples there of um, the collaboration that the master plan is intended to do. Confectionery makers, of course, joined the process after the conclusion of the master plan. And uh, there's still conversations taking place on the extent of local sugar procurement and, uh, and also their concerns uh, in some areas uh, on this matter. The experience on the whole has been largely positive, though the period of the commitment on local procurement is proving to be insufficient to finalize policy on new value chains using sugar. The Department of Mineral Resources and Energy has published the biofuels document for comment after the finalization of the sugar master plan, but as I indicated earlier, their further work was affected by changes in the fuels market. Transformation measures have been robust. Uh, and again, the industry has put a considerable resource into trying to promote small scale farmers to, to help make them uh, their businesses more viable and support them. And that's been rolled out on a consistent basis. I should indicate that the July unrest uh, last year and the floods in uh, the, the eastern seaboard this year has had an effect on the sugar industry. And last year, the uh, DTIC and the IDC stepped in with um, a package of support for small scale farmers, many of whom had lost uh, uh, quite a bit of their sugar production uh, in the, uh, in the um, July unrest. We've put a slide together that uh, contains some comments that was made in January this year from uh, the main small-scale black farmer organization in the sector, that's SAFDA, whose uh, president uh, is a very active participant in the Sugar Master Plan and is joining us today. And the report that Lerato Mataboche will take the committee through that follows from slide six is a draft input into the next executive oversight uh, committee meeting. And uh, <clears throat> of course, it may be amended to take into account further work being done on the sugar industry, some further reflections from Minister Didiza and her team uh, and from uh, within the DTIC but also a more detailed list of successes is being prepared. And again, I want to compliment Savda. They uh, released some videos that um, uh, where ordinary small scale farmers were telling their story in January this year. <clears throat> the next slide uh, indicates uh, some extracts from a document, a media statement that Savda issued at the end of January this year. And uh, it makes for interesting reading because in that uh, document, it indicates some of the positives of the, uh, the master plan. And, they, and while I think SAFDA has indicated all of that, we know as government that there are also challenges that we're going to uh, need to work closely with the industry to address. But the, the uh, uh, the press, uh, press release, I think, in particular, contains uh, some very interesting uh, uh, sound bites and information from different people. Uh, for example, in addition to the, the story that um, the uh, 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 head of SAFDA uh, puts forward, they also point to small-scale farmers like Rosaline uh, Makwankwa, uh, of Mpumalanga province uh, and, and the comments uh, that she's made. Uh, they speak to uh, Dentro Mkwanazi from Felixton in Mpangeni. Uh, and there are a number of other similar testimonies of what is uh, been happening. And they're really talking about what is 
the value of the transformation fund, the one billion rand over five years uh, that has been put there. And what the transformation fund, among others, does is to try to build a class of small-scale farmers <clears throat> that are able to, to contribute to South Africa's future. So, Chairperson, with those um, very brief introductory remarks, um, a brief in the sense that, um, I guess I shouldn't say brief, but uh, limited, limited uh, 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 remarks, uh, I would... Um, uh, leave the bulk of the presentation to Deputy Minister Gina, uh, as well as uh, to Deputy Director General Lerato Mataboche, and then ask, with your permission, Chairperson, if we could ask Ms. Joan Fubbs, uh, Dr. Siabonga Matlala, and Mr. Thomas Funk to also make some uh, brief remarks uh, to supplement the presentation. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Minister, and uh, thank you for at least uh, joining us for part of this morning, and we wish you well in your further deliberations in the mining in Daba. Thank you very much, Minister, and I will hand over to, to uh, Deputy Minister Gina. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson, and greetings to the members of the Portfolio Committee, the delegation from the Department DJC and all the stakeholders, all the family, the sugar family that is here. Uh, Chair, as the minister has uh, made the opening remarks, can I hand over to DDG Matabuche to lead on the presentation as per the slides that have been prepared on the side of the DGIC? Can I hand over to DDG, Chair? Thank you very then, much. Then DDG after that, Yes. And after that, as the minister has alluded, then we'll request the three uh, people from the the industry to, to have yes. the brief comments. Then we'll hand that over to you, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much. DDG Matapoche. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members, uh, Deputy Minister Gina. Uh, industry representatives and some of my colleagues that are on the call. Um, thank you for this opportunity to, to take you through progress that we've made so far with respect to the Sugar Master Plan. Um, I must say that I'm grateful to the minister's overview. It was actually very detailed, so it makes my job uh, much easier. Uh, so, Chair, if you will allow certain slides, I will skip because the minister did provide... Um, the committee with with you know a lot of detail um, and this will also allow us to to then have our strategic industry representatives um, give a view uh, as the minister has has um, recommended. I think broadly speaking, um, the importance of this master plan that we have on sugar is to really enable us to one in the short term maintain or sustain the industry and sustain some of the the market, domestic and international market uh, access that we have, um, and in the long term, really for us to diversify and to transform the industry. So what we are doing with all the different committees of the master plan is trying to do that to say, you know, what does the future look like for the industry? And uh, currently in the short term, how do we sustain um, the opportunities uh, that we have um, in that regard. Um, now, to recap, uh, honorable members, we started um, entering into the master plan in 2020. So it's very new, um, this compact that between ourselves as government and private sector. So in 2020, in 2020 we signed um, this compact and established 10 task teams that are driving uh, implementation of the master plan as we speak. Um, and to date, I think in this very short space of time, we are quite pleased with the progress that has been made so far. Uh, for example, in the first quarter of 2021, we saw that um, you know, we had 15% sales uh, growth in local sales. Of, of sugar. Um, and we also saw that, you know, there was price restraint that was achieved. And we are quite pleased with that because this, again, is part of the strategic conversations we've been having with industry, where industry has been 
you know, um, engaging government for us to assist with, for example, maintenance of um, the sugar tax, uh, and they then make um, also commitments to say that they can. I maintain. think DG, DDG. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, Chairperson. Chair, can am I audible? I'm not sure whether it's my network, but to break. Oh, I see it's my network that's un un unstable, but if you can um, switch off your video, uh, oh. we've now seen your beautiful face, just so that we can increase bandwidth. Thank you so much. You can continue. Thank you, Chair. Um, am, I, uh, am I audible? Is it better now? Yes, you are audible. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, so again, in terms of the, thank you, thank you very much uh, uh, on um, Thomas Funk for the audio is perfect. Thank you. Um, yes, we also saw that uh, there was a decrease um, in the 2021-2022 season uh, in terms of uh, imports, um, and we saw an increase of, of uh, sugar from uh, Eswatini and Sadek. Uh, and I think this is this is important because this, it speaks to also how we want to. Um, you know, maintain one local markets, maintain um, our, our partnerships in, in African markets, uh, et cetera. And another important element is that we did maintain the threshold uh, on the sugar tax um, and, and, and the rate and the scope was maintained in 2021. Um, another key development is the 60 million rand uh, small scale growers uh, premium that was approved. Very, very important insofar as transformation is concerned um, and, and deepening the partnerships uh, between the large sugar producers and, of course, the, the, the small scale growers and black growers specifically. Uh, Minister touched on that, so I won't go into too much detail there. Uh, similarly, there's been um, quite robust by local um, campaigns that have been rolled out um, with Hewlett's, Tongat Hewlett's, with Proudly SA, uh, Sweet Home, Living Lekka locally, Black Friday and Festive Season and Sasa, etc. So there's been in a very short space of time um, quite a number of very, very strategic and important engagements um, in this industry. Um, can we move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, in terms of the 10 task teams uh, that were spoken to, um, I'll just give a quick recap of what the intention of each task team is. Uh, one task team one is really looking at uh, SACU trade harmonization. And here work is underway to develop a proposal uh, with Eswatini of how do we harmonize the regulatory framework um, around, around the trade in sugar in the customs union. And similarly, uh, how do we work on a deeper partnership uh, between the two markets so that we are not competitive, uh, we are actually more collaborative. Uh, one is two African economies and um, similarly as neighbors that don't want to necessarily displace and or destroy each other's um, industries. So there's a lot of work underway there, both um, at the SACU level multilaterally and increasingly going forward, we'll be having a number of bilateral engagements with Eswatini um, around collaboration and so far as the industry is concerned. The task team two is looking at job retention and mitigation. And here we are looking at, at how do we retain jobs in this industry. There has been um, some job losses, retrenchments, um, you know, as, as a result of a number of challenges the industry has gone through. So our, our priority here to, as government and with industry, uh, working together with industries, how do we minimize job losses and, and have stabilization insofar as jobs are concerned? So a lot of work is going into that. Um, three, it's around small scales grower support. How do we develop uh, a small scale grower master plan? Because we want to, to ensure that at the foundational level, small scale growers um, are preserved. Um, and also there's a vision around, around their growth and how they become an integral part of the, of the whole value chain. Um, task team four is around transformation. Again, here there's a lot of work still to be done and there's a lot of work that has already gone into this because it's about really drafting a strategy for the future 
to say, how do we advance active participation uh, in the value chain by black farmers, industrialists, women, youth, uh, disabled persons, um, and how do we reach, uh, you know, through stabilizing and restructuring the, the industry. Um, it's really also around transformation in so far as ownership, participation and job creation, and really have a vision, uh, vision 20, 20, 2030, um, about what we want the industry to look like at that point. Right. Uh, task team five is looking at crop diversification. Uh, here it's about strategies and support for diversification by growers, um, you know, as an alternative to sugarcane, I think Minister touched on this to say, you know, what other new crops can be brought uh, into into play um, to, man, to to ensure that uh, financial vi viability of our sugarcane growers um, are maintained or is maintained. Okay. Um, next slide, please. Task team six is around downstream diversification. Again, a lot of work is going into this and for the long run, uh, we, we're really going to be putting a lot of effort here because it's really about um, the future of the industry and identifying and developing new and additional uh, sugarcane based downstream products, uh, both for local market as well as for international markets. So uh, we are looking at the, you know, the types of skills that are required, uh, the types of technology that is required, and how do we address constraints, bottlenecks, um, and how do we understand the global landscape um, in, in, in this space. Task Team 7 is looking at product tax policy. Here is really uh, around developing industry proposals for long-term policy frameworks, as well as um, the, a long-term approach to taxation insofar as sugar and sugar-derived products um, are concerned. Um, I think at, at, at the heart of it is really around establishing certainty, predictability, so that we can aggregate investments that we need um, in, in, in the industry. Task Team 8 is looking at uh, overall industry restructuring. And here we are busy with a plan to rebalance uh, industry capacity, improve efficiencies and restore profitability. And also again, set the foundations for vision 2030 so that we can have a competitive, sustainable, diversified uh, sugarcane based value chain. Task team nine is looking at how do we restore local market and offtake commitments um, here. Uh, for a period of three years, we are looking at uh, restoring at least 150,000 tons of sugar offtake to the local sugar industry, um, and we want to increase this to 300,000 tons uh, by year three. The last task team is um, the one that looks at confectionery competitiveness. Um, and uh, here work started a, a relatively uh, late compared to the other task teams. So there's still quite a bit of work to be done here. And he has to develop uh, detailed action plans um, backed by data so that we can enhance the competitiveness of our small scale confectionery producers. Um, quite an important uh, component of, of, of the industry and, and, and the whole value chain. Next slide, please. Um, some of the key challenges um, that are faced by the, the sector, I think uh, the industry really is making up 20% of agri-food sector. So this says to us that, um, you know, we have to do everything that we can to preserve it, number one, and there is at the heart of, 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 of the sector, um, the issue of uh, food security. Um, so we are looking at issues of cost of production, uh, issues of, uh, raise, you know, the, the rise in wages. These are some of the challenges that the industry is facing. Uh, Minister mentioned the impact of the July unrest, the impact of the floods. Again, that has compounded um, some of the, the, the challenges um, that the industry is facing. Um, regional value chain production and trade structure need to be harmonized so that we can we can harness African continent's resources and markets and work is continuing here so far as SACU. Um, again, the industry is lagging behind in terms of transformation targets, um, but the, the importance of having this master plan is really to then put impetus in this, in this work. Um, and we are busy with, with, with the targets around transformation. Um, the industry has experienced decline in productive assets that resulted in imbalances to growing milling refining capabilities. Um, 
And the reduction in this has severely impacted the cane deliveries, uh, especially small scale growers. So now we are looking at um, single stream business model and this limits uh, capacity to overcome challenges and be globally competitive. Again, the master plan has to assist us um, to address um, this particular issue. Um, the issue of the sugar tax as well um, is another uh, key challenge. Here, the importance is really around uh, predictability, and we're working on on on, on those 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 issues, um, shrinking milling capacity, and again, Mauritius sugar import threat. Um, it's, it's it's looming, but conversations are underway um, at at the SADC level as well to deal with the issue of um, the proposal by Mauritius in so far as, as as sugar in the region. Some of the achievements to date, uh, I think we mentioned the increase of sugar from the region, SADC specifically 45%, as well as 15% from Eswatini. Um, one of another positive development is the achievement, sorry, I need to move, is the achievement against the target of 150,000 uh, tons increase. Uh, of uh, our production, and um, we are looking at actually over three years, a target of uh, 300,000 300, tons. Um, we also have uh, a target of a 1 billion transformation fund, and 200 million of which is to be allocated in the 2022 and 2023 season. Uh, we've already mentioned the very positive development of the 60 million uh, RAND uh, small scale grower premium payment that was paid in January 2022 for three seasons. Um, and, uh, you know, we are looking forward to the positive impact that this is going to have uh, to small scale uh, growers. Um, the buy local campaigns have also been very, very positive and have contributed to the increase in uh, sales and, and, and local sugar. Um, and also, uh, we have seen. We have seen the establishment of a number of uh, diversified uh, products uh, insofar as downstream uh, product streams are concerned. Um, and also we, we have also we are looking at exploring the engine repurpose facility facility for ethanol production. This is contributing to, our, to the long term diversification strategy that we mentioned. Um, ShopRite has also entered into a partnership with South African cane, cane growers, um, prioritizing the selling of locally produced sugar. Uh, in its 1,189 stores. And this has made a huge contribution and will continue to contribute positively uh, to localizing uh, sugar and domestic sugar consumption. Next slide, please. All right, so Chair, if you will allow, I'd like to actually skip the tables because they do reiterate um, some of the key areas that we've mentioned and the work underway uh, in the task team. So please um, move to the next slide. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Now here uh, is just a quick summary of um, what our medium term and long term objectives uh, are insofar as small scale growers specifically. Um, it's important that we, we, we highlight that we have um, 13,891 growers, including co-ops, co um, and these are the ones that have shared in the 60 million um, uh, uh, support uh, funding that we, we mentioned. Um, and it's important that we, we also uh, uh, underscore the fact that in the long term, we want to develop a sustainable plan to support small scale growers. Uh, work here has not fully started. Um, and, and I'm underscoring this so that in the next report, we can then begin to, to give a sense of uh, progress um, in this regard. Next slide, please. Okay. All right, this is just a summary as well from the South African Sugar Association uh, in terms of um, grant funding and input uh, into small scale growers as a new intervention and, and some of the budget allocation. Um, so, you know, this is great um, 
initial work that that we can we can note but i think we we should have a dedicated um holistic report back to committee um on on what the strategy the long term strategy is for small scale growers um next slide please okay we can move on as well i will skip the tables in the interest of time All right. Um, next slide, please. Okay, great. Now, um, Chair, in moving towards conclusion, the key focus areas and priorities for the next 12 months, it's important that we, we give a sense of these. Um, we will be having an executive oversight council meeting um, very soon, uh, which we have regularly presided upon by the respective ministers. So what we're going to be doing in the next 12 months is we'll be processing the draft South African position on sugar trade harmonization. Um, um, and, and now this is where Eswatini, Saku, et cetera, uh, are involved. We'll be monitoring developments in the Saku regarding proposals on uh, sugar rebates. We'll be completing the sugar value chain analysis and employment data collection. Um, we'll be continuing work on the draft job retention and mitigation strategy. We'll be facilitating greater participation by organized labor in the master plan processes and um, particularly in the task teams. We'll be rolling out small scale grower survey so that this can inform the draft support strategy and the program of action. Uh, next slide, please. We'll also be finalizing the remaining crop diversification scenarios modeling. Um, and uh, th this is going to include, um, you know, issues of uh, diversified but un unsustainable uh, uh, um, crops, for example, uh, and, and the ones that would be highly sustainable. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, work to be done here in the modeling. Um, develop a proposal to take up some of the COP26 green energy funding, as well as commitment for sugarcane value chain diversification. Um, this is, again, a new and important piece of work as part of the diversification strategy um, and, and, and um, seeing how we can leverage some of the, the, the energy funding that has become available. We'll be finalizing the scoping for feasibility applications for polyethylene and glutamic acid. We'll be monitoring budget vote announcements and facilitating discussion of support measures by Delred specifically, as well as uh, ourselves as a department, DTIC. Um, and we'll be finalizing uh, Beverage SA, um, CGCSA and um, South African uh, SASCA competition concerns and enable provision of employment data and local procurement plans and actuals. We'll also be developing the implementation plan for restructuring uh, proposals, uh, including remedies that may be applicable. We'll be finalizing the industry tariff apl application on imported confectionery products for consideration by regulators. Um, next slide, please. So that is the, the, the end of the, the plan for um, the next 12 months. Um, it's actually quite a lot of work, uh, quite involved work. Um, but I think to to give credit to the department, um, this work is also ably led by uh, our chief director, Ngumisa, um, who is working very, very closely with industry to get us over the line. It may seem like a very, very involved um, work program uh, for 12 months, but I think you know, we can confidently say that it's, it's a work program that we can deliver on and give uh, positive reports going forward. Um, so with that, uh, Chair, with your permission, I'll hand back over to Deputy Minister Gina, uh, who is leading us, um, and I will pause there. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, DDG. Honorable Mold, uh, we are just going to get some inputs from the state.
stakeholders before we take questions? Unless it's something urgent you wanted to. Okay, I think, um, Honorable, uh, Honorable uh, Deputy Minister, um, with your team, will indicate to us uh, who, which, which stakeholder will give input now. Thank you very much, Chair. Yes, let us take those inputs from the stakeholders. We can start with uh, <laughs> or Ms. Fabs. You can, she can come in. Then, yeah, we'll take oh, them as they come. Then, Ms. Ms. Will I'm them. also having a stable. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure whether it's my connectivity connection or yours, Chair, but you are, you are, you are, you are breaking from my side. Yeah, I'm no, I think sure. it's mine. My computer's telling me the network is unstable. Um, okay. So my Shall I start, Chairperson? Connectivity, I think. Okay, yeah, Chair, we, we are really having a problem from your side, but from our side, Ms. Mabu, this is ready. Thank you right. so much. Shall I begin then, uh, uh, Deputy Minister? I am on mute. Thank you. May I start? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting the sugar industry as a stakeholder to Parliament to engage it and ascertain at first hand what the challenges are, how we, what progress the industry has made with these challenges, in particular, the ones that were outlined by Minister Patel about trying to make the industry viable, reviable, as it were, to renew their industrial capacities. But also linked to that would be the whole idea of ensuring that small sugar growers can and remain a foundational aspect of the sugar industry. Because unless we promote small sugar cane growers, we will fail to have middle and larger later on. Thirdly, the, the sugar cane industry, wherever it is in the rural and peri-urban, they provide the local economy. Without the sugar cane industry, little villages would collapse. Many, many people would lose their jobs beyond simply those employed by the sugar industry. So they remain a very critical industry, particularly in rural areas. The other issue is um, where we have made great achievements, which we've all heard now about the um, wonderful achievement in ensuring that the um, premium price was achieved very early when we started tackling it. And that does show that there is, among all associations in the sugar industry, that there is a recognition that small sugarcane growers must be supported. But where we are experiencing some challenges would be in the concept and principle of transformation. Yes, if you compare issues to what they were 15 years ago, there's been tremendous transformation in the sugar industry, which you may recall, Chairperson and honorable colleagues. At one stage, not so long ago, black sugarcane growers were criminals. So we have advanced since then. But the challenge that is now appears to be emerging is that for some associations, we are moving too fast and too much. For others, we are not moving fast enough. So yes, there's a recognition that there is transformation, but many in the sugar industry, particularly um, this association of SAFTA, believe that we are moving too little, too slow. But somewhere along the line, we have to find each other because we must put the sugar industry first before our associations. One of the things that um, has also impacted on the sugar industry has been the um, health tax, but we are pursuing that through other channels as well. Where we are making progress 
is in the diversification. And you would have seen that the um, sugar industry recognizes that we need to convert sugar into something else besides using it to sweeten drinks, et cetera. And you would also have heard from the minister about the pursuit of ethanol and jet fuel, which is underway. Another interesting thing is the pursuit of plastic. We think of plastic as only being made from um, fossil fuels, but in fact, we can utilize biofuels. That includes the sugar cane. Another area where we have, um, we had many challenges, but now we are addressing them, woman. We have a woman's entrepreneurial forum, which is also trying to share with women and support fresh initiatives. Yes, you are growing sugar cane. What else can you grow as a quick cash crop? And that um, is something, a forum that includes women across the board in wherever uh, Sasa operates, in every village, district, province, and so on. Yet another is the recognition of youth employment. As all South Africans know, most young people want to race to the city. They don't want to remain in the rural areas. So how do we ensure that we keep our youth in rural areas doing work that they love, uh, being trained in something they want to pursue and finding employment in that area. Because if they don't find employment, yes, they will shift to peri-urban and urban areas. Another thing which I would simply like to raise um, with Parliament we have realized that the South African sugar industry um, legislation, when it was first promulgated, adopted, et cetera, we never had quite the same challenges. So we are working on some amendments which we would like to put to the minister and the parliamentary committee. And um, they range from very, very simple issues uh, which are serious issues, such as voting, is it really fair that anyone can simply veto a decision? We are unpacking that and trying to move to something that is fairer than that. The other issue we are looking at is um, the mills, the crushing. I think a lot has been said about how to recapacitate the mills so that they can crush all the cane that is delivered. But as soon as we use the word delivery, therein lies another challenge. Delivery of cane. Bigger sugar cane farmers can afford to contract transport. Smaller sugar cane farmers can't. So again, Sasa is working on how to group together smaller farmers so that their delivery can be more economic than it is currently. Um, there are many others with me here who could add more chairperson, and perhaps they may be able to share some thoughts on the matter. I'm thinking of Safiso Maslabu, the national market executive, but also Portia Imporfu, the external affairs um, director. And there are many others. Cedric is our Mboyisa, is our Sasa communications manager, Irene Sinovich, the master plan project manager, Judith Wilson, the di commercial director. And we also have supporting us today, Trix Trickham, the executive director. And I'm sure they can add to what I have omitted and overlooked. Thank you, Madam Chair. Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honourable Fabs. Have you concluded? Yes, but I'm no longer okay. honourable. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm, I'm not a member of Parliament. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you are so very honourable. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, you. DM uh, Gina, 
who's leading the delegation for now. Uh, who's the next stakeholder? Thank you very much, Chair. There are quite a number of stakeholders, Chair, but because this is the portfolio committee meeting, we are not going to call them all because we do have our executive oversight meetings of which we've got another one due, but we'll just take a very few for today just to showcase our presentation. But I just want Thank to you. assure everyone we see here from the industry to say they are important and we do have our platform where we sit and discuss around these issues. Right now, we'll follow uh, who served at the small scale growers, uh, the president of Mr. Ma oh, Mr. Madlala, then he will be followed by uh, 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 Thomas Fanke from the 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 the, 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 the bigger <laughs> the, the the cane growers, the bigger ones. Okay. Uh, so we'll take the two, then we'll take on the discussions. Then with the rest, we are going to have our executive oversight meeting where we can discuss these issues. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, uh, Dr. Madlala. Thank you, uh, uh, Chairperson, and honorable members and uh, ministers, deputy minister, uh, all the value chain uh, stakeholders and all protocol observed. Thank you so much for this opportunity, honorable, min honorable Chairperson. Um, we are indeed meeting at a special time when we look back and see if the master plan or the, 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 the ministers did not intervene at the, at the time to introduce the master plan where would the sugar industry be? Uh, some of us, when looking at, at a projected uh, industry from that time, the problem would have been more sugar mills shut down and more growers going out of business. Um, because the master plan did come in at the time where we, we were totally squeezed as an industry. So <clears throat> uh, small scale farmers becoming then the, the easy targets or the ones who get hit hard. Um, but now we, we stand tall and celebrate the, the, the spin-offs of the master plan in that um, indeed we have celebrated for the first year the, 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 the premium price, which the minister had, had alluded to and, and other speakers have spoken about, which is the 60 million rand that small scale growers achieved and received in January. Um, it is the first time, it's the first of its kind that uh, a payment comes in in January when uh, it's a time where school is, uh, and uh, children have to go back to schools and farmers normally would not have money. They'll be running to uh, money, uh, money lenders, machonistas and all that at the time, but they had money uh, to actually be able to send their kids back to school. I must say that not only did we just celebrate that breakthrough from the industry, now the ministers that are instrumental in the master plan, we also have a uh, Department of Agriculture Minister Didiza, who also through the spirit of master plan has begun to roll out what we call farmer production support units to seven milling areas as we stand. Um, um, right now, government has spent over 80 million procuring uh, implements and in, uh, implements and tractors to support small scale farmers in their farming uh, venture. Plus also on top of that, there's an approval for infrastructure development to, to build those farmer production support units so that we can bring closer the inputs for to improve production for small scale farmers. There's also support for infrastructure on the irrigated ones in Pumalanga, uh, over 58 million has been approved to improve irrigation infrastructure. We are quite excited that there's a serious commitment from government and we can also celebrate that when we had about the increase in the sugar tax uh, pay, uh, percentage, uh, our ministers intervened again to at least have it, have it deferred, though we would be really appreciative of a, a dispensation if we could put a moratorium on the sugar tax uh, until such time that the diversification opportunities are unlocked, then we can go for biofuels full blast. Then we know, even if you put a sugar tax, but as an industry, we have another alternative to really uh, you know, uh, divert to. But I must say, as small scale farmers, we celebrate the master plan and indeed the bring and bry that government spoke of, we can see it being uh, really uh, tangible. Uh, however, one needs to highlight that there is also a little bit of the bright, of a bring that the industry uh, should uh, and, and, and we should move quite fast with. <clears throat> in terms of the bring and bry, while we are celebrating that uh, in, in January, um, small scale farmers received uh, at 60 million rand, we, we, we can't ignore the 200,000 tons um, stroke 95 million rand of revenue that small scale farmers lost out to have, that they could have benefited from due to unfortunately the two 
uh, um, uh, situations here, the shrinking milling capacity, um, but also the, the manner, the, the way in which sugarcane is received at the mills, there is an exclusionary clause that the industry works with right now. It's exclusionary in the sense that the way it's designed, it, it favors commercial farmers to access to the mills at the expense of small scale farmers. And the industry is not moving as fast as we would like for them to move on this one, because uh, last year we lost out tangible small scale farmers who could not benefit in the 60 million rent kitty because they could not deliver their cane, which is about 10% of the small scale growers who did not deliver one stick of cane. Um, that compared to commercial farmers, if you reduce tonnage and say 10%, it would mean they would have delivered 90% of their tonnage at least. But here, it would mean that small scale farmers never, the 10% never delivered one stick of cane. It could be a cocoa, it could be a mkulu who was expecting to get some money to pay for their livelihood, but they never did. So I think we, in the spirit of the master plan, which endorses small scale farmers to be foundational to the sugar industry, we should be looking at protecting the industry, the small scale farmers, even legislatively, and not leave them to fend for themselves. But I am excited that there is talks, but I think as an industry, we don't move as fast as it, we, would, we, would, uh, we would like to see. And also, the transformation kitty, uh, as it were, it's not just uh, money going to small scale farmers. There's also money that comes to organizations like SAFTA, for instance, because there's a lot of work we are doing, which is a backlog to what has should have been done for black farmers in, in the past. Uh, and we really would like to be supported as, a, as an organization because we can't compare what we do as, as SAFTA uh, to what the other counterparts are doing because we are really dealing with bread and butter issues, things we cannot delay, things that require us to go on the ground, to go where no one would have driven to, where people use donkey cuts to deliver their, their fertilizers and so forth. So that is what we need to be doing and focusing on to actually uplift the rural communities. As part of the, uh, the, the, the commitments from Tibetan agriculture, one must commend also the approval of, um, of, of, of a bankable feasibility study to actually put a sugar mill in Makatini. I'm, I'm raising this, it's still a, a bankable feasibility study, but if you look at that uh, region, it's one of the poorest districts that we've been to, yet it has such a huge potential and it could change the, 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 the face of the industry, that, that you can bring in a mill that can be owned by small scale farmers who can actually farm more land and, just, and, and support and supply the likes of the Coca-Cola who want to actually up and boost their blood spend. So it's, it's opportunities such as those and would like to see everybody supports and, and, and more so our, our department of training in, in industry. But I must say that we are excited. We are looking at, into this restructuring industry with a very close eye that it does not impact small scale farmers. If needs be, there should be a way of bringing in even if it's micro milling, that would protect the, the livelihoods of the small scale farmers because indeed, the small scale farmers cannot afford to suffer the restructuring and be left to fend on their own because they cannot diversify easily into other commodities because firstly, they're expensive to, to, to diversify into. Secondly, theft is one of the paramount things in the small scale growing sector that you need to worry about because high commodities, high value commodities are easily stolen and you are talking about rural people here who, whose lives anyway are in danger. So we, we really would like to uh, um, you know, look closely to the restructuring of the industry, protecting those that are the weakest. But indeed, we are appreciative of the minister's um, interventions into getting us together to sign up on the master plan. We appreciate all the other partners, the, in the industrial users of the, of the sugar, to commit to, to buying local. Indeed, we're going to boost their black buying spend by introducing black farmers into the agro processing space. We do have a fertilizer plant. We've just started on that one, but we want to we want to integrate our black farmers into the whole value chain. We have got trucks already that are hauling cane, and thank God to the master to the FPS use the farmer production supporting units intervention. Calvin has bought us twelve brand new cane haulage trucks, uh, which added onto our fleet. We must say work is continuing. Work is happening. We need our portfolio committee to come out and, and also have an oversight just to see the progress made. And we owe our very being and the very existence in the sugar industry, or rather recognition in the sugar industry, to this portfolio committee, which intervened at a time when we were told legislation does not allow us to be recognized. And I think we need to get to a point now where legislation does not become something we hide on every time. We need to show willingness to change legislation, if it be, because legislation was signed in this this. This legislation or the, the sugar exercise was signed in 1978. They had no recognition whatsoever of the transformation phase we are in right now. And I think people need to be flexible quick enough to adopt the new South Africa that we want to leave for our, our, our generations and future generations to come. 
I really appreciate this time, Chairperson. And uh, no, I know that there's more to, to, to talk about, but I'm just uh, hold my horses now. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That is uh, Dr. Madrala from the South African Farmers Development uh, Association. Uh, we now move to um, the South African Cane Growers Association. Mr. Funk. Yes, good morning, Chairperson. Um, good morning, Deputy Minister Gina and uh, all honorable minister, uh, members of the, of the Portfolio Committee. Um, Chairperson, with your indulgence, I'd like to hand over to Kiki Mzoneli, who is our Vice Chairperson of SAK and Growers, for a few words on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, good morning, Chair and members of the First Follow Committee. My name is Kiki Mzoneli, Vice Chair of SAK and Growers Association. And we are so grateful for the opportunity to present today uh, to you today. I'd just like to share with you what who Ken Growers is. Ken Growers is an association that has uh, represented the interests of all growers, black and white, 22,000 growers, of which 21,000 of them are small scale growers, of which I belong to. Our commitment to small scale growers in particular is very clear from our work that we are doing on a daily basis. We provide extensive services and support to growers and advocate for policies that protect their interests as well as those of the broader in, in industry. Despite this, the losses that we have seen, uh, some important successes and all these have only been possible because we value the collaboration of our of the stakeholders in the sugar industry and would like to say that working with government industry partners and value chain stakeholders we have seen the industry through the difficulties in the past few years but the sugar uh, cane value chain master plan represents the pinnacle of this collaboration spirit working together in the industry with the stakeholders and government it has really crafted the master plan to revive the sector and restructure it for the future. So as cane growers, we are really, really proud of all that we have achieved thus far under the auspices of the master plan, despite hardships of the first, past few years. And we are really grateful for this opportunity to just uh, engage and interact with all the stakeholders that are here today. But also, I'd like to highlight our a great program, which is Home Sweet Home, which is very, we are so happy. We saw it from uh, the slides uh, where Tulu was uh, presenting. Thank you, Tulu. And also, just to highlight on the state of the industry that the sugar industry is the most transformed industry in the SA agricultural sector right now. With significant tonnages being delivered by black growers, we are so grateful for that. But also the industry is really struggling to transform further because it's still in the ICU. And the current economics and lack of milling capacity will really not allow the industry to emerge from the state it is. So without an active program to push alternatives such as sustainable avi aviation fuels, I really believe the industry will struggle and it will never succeed. So I'd really like to see TT4 transformation a, a task team for working very hard to open a investment to, so that we can have new industries and see new uses of sugar. Also, I'd like to say uh, I'd like to say that more needs to be done on transformation, but we are really working very hard in 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 transforming the industry. But also, I'd like to thank uh, the opening of our uh, minister and the overview, the great overview that he, he shared with us today. And we want to say that we really want to drive the investment and job creation and the unemployment that is facing our rural communities. But since I'm a grower from a Groudville, and right now our mill is closed and it has a crashing downtime, I just want to share 
the revenue that is supposed to be received by the growers that we're not going to receive in this season. Due to the crashing downtime, we will see growers losing a revenue of 120 million. And can you imagine also with the COVID, with the impact of COVID-19, with the impact of the unrest, with now the impact of the flood, what is it the, the, what is going to happen to our growers? So we really like to ask all the stakeholders, and I appreciate uh, the input from my other colleagues, Ms. Forbes and uh, uh, Dr. Madlala. Uh, we really like to see the industry coming together and really addressing uh, the issues that are going to help uh, the industry to go forward, especially talking about the new investments that we are really interested in. And in closing, I'd like to say, we, as SA Ken Growers, we'd like to invite the Portfolio Committee to just come and meet our new leadership uh, in SA Ken Growers so that we can engage further and showcase what is it that we are doing in the sugar industry and helping the small scale growers and all the growers. And also, as a person who is also disabled and uh, physically challenged, I'd like to say I have a huge responsibility to help other people who are physically a challenge like me to come into the industry, to come into the sector, which is a big responsibility. So this value master plan is really going to help us to address issues of women, issues of uh, the, the disabled people and the youth. So. For now, we are very happy uh, engaging with the government, but we realize that the transformation is a long journey. There are so many things that uh, we need to do together, working together. So I'd like to thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Mr. Funk, did you want to uh, make any additions? Yeah, person, thank you. No, um, our vice chair has um, covered everything. Thank you very much, Chair Person. Okay, thank you so much. Um, can I now hand over to Mr. Lutka from the South African Millers Association? Thank you, Chairperson, and good morning to you and all the honorable members of the Portfolio Committee, as well as our fellow stakeholders in the sugar industry. Um, I think the speakers so far have already mentioned most of the important matters in relation to the master plan progress, but allow me to reiterate our industry's appreciation for the successes of the master plan to date. Uh, and in particular, our, uh, our colleagues in the sugar industry from SA Cane Grows and also from SAFTA. Um, we've had some robust discussions and I think we've achieved a lot. We found each other on many of the contentious issues and that bodes well uh, for, for those issues that are, are still outstanding. Uh, we'd also like to recognize government's efforts uh, in this regard. It hasn't been an easy road in many of the master plan uh, committee meetings, but I think so far we've done pretty well. Uh, although I'd also like to to mention that we shouldn't get carried away with our successes. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, a lot of these have already been, been mentioned. Uh, we are a little bit concerned about uh, the commitment of all the stakeholders in the master plan. We know we have a target of 300,000 tons of additional sales to achieve, which we are fearful that, that we might miss uh, in the third year of the program. Uh, policy alignment has also already been raised, uh, particularly in relation to the health promotion levy, uh, and, and we look forward to, to coordination in, in that regard. Um, of particular concern to us uh, are the continuing cost increases, uh, particularly in this environment of price restraint. We feel that it's very important that labour comes on board uh, to ensure that expectations are, are realistic and in line with what the industry has committed to uh, in terms of that price restraint that I've already mentioned. Um, we are looking forward to progress on, on SACU policy harmonization to prevent that destructive uh, com competitive dynamics uh, that we are concerned about. Um, and, and just to highlight that, you, you know, if we fail to, to correct some of these challenges, um, we, we risk delaying the, the objectives of the master plan. And that's obviously something all of us wish to avoid. 
particularly during the current times of unexpected and disruptive um, elements creeping into the master plan. I'm speaking specifically of, of COVID. I'm speaking of the floods in, in KZM that have caused a lot of damage. And, and I agree with uh, Kiki that, you know, we sympathize with, with Gledau. Uh, what's happened there is, is regrettable. Uh, and we wish them all of the best to, to get back up and running. Uh, hopefully this month sometime and, and, and that they can get back on board, both with their growers and in terms of uh, supplying uh, customers. I think as millers, we, we need to acknowledge uh, that we have a role to play uh, in terms of improving milling performance. It has become a bit of an issue in certain areas of late. Um, there are obviously some mills who are doing very well. Um, average milling performance has over dipped a bit, but just to reassure everybody uh, that all the millers are fully on board uh, on correct of correcting this, uh, the incentives uh, are there, uh, and and the rewards will certainly come. And we, we trust that the efforts of uh, of all the millers in, in this particular area are going to pay off soon, uh, and that everybody can get back on track. Um, I think there, there are many areas where we'd like to do more, uh, both as millers and as an industry, in support of of, of all of our stakeholders. Uh, at the end of the day, we we also have to be realistic in terms of uh, what's affordable. Um, some millers are right on the edge uh, and, and any more cost shocks or, or drop in income has a very real potential um, of, uh, of, of sinking some of them. So we, we take great pains at uh, emphasizing that uh, wherever we can. But at the same time, uh, I speak on all the millers when I say that we are fully committed to the process and are fully intent on, on achieving the goals that we have set for ourselves. Uh, Today's perhaps not the time and place to delve into all of these issues in detail, uh, but we are hoping that the Executive Oversight Committee uh, and also the operational leadership uh, of, uh, of some of these task teams will bring some focus uh, onto the challenges that I've mentioned so we can keep the momentum going um, and also to correct where, where necessary. So the talks are ongoing. Uh, we look forward to making even more progress uh, in securing our industry's future. Um, I think it's gone pretty well to date, uh, so, so well done to everybody involved, um, and we look forward to the rest of, of today's engagement. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Lutke. Um, members, that concludes all the presentation uh, presentations for today. We are a bit ahead of schedule, but I, we have planned just a few minutes break, a uh, comfort break, and then we will come back. But I think let me take hands for now. I've got Ms. Honorable Mulder and then this Honorable McPherson and then Honorable Thring. Any further hands? We'll take uh, further hands, uh, Honorable Mbuyani. Honorable Moatse. Malamatia. Malamatia. Utahum. Utahum. Okay. Those are, um, are we taking a break or can we continue, uh, uh, Secretary? Chair, did it, it depends on the, may I suggest we maybe take a 10 minute break and then we come back for questions, Chair? Okay. Let's just take a body break. Uh, please don't log out. And then we will reconvene at 22. Thank you very much, members.
don't log out and then we will reconvene at 22. Thank you very much, members. Ms. Uh, further hands, uh, Honorable Mbuyani. Honorable Moatse. Malamatia. Malamatia. Utahu. Utahu. Okay. Those are, um, are we taking a break or can we continue, uh, uh, Secretary? Chair, it depends on the messages. We maybe take a 10 minute break and then we come back for questions, Chair. Thank you. Complex issues that it has received the to either we, we, we take the comfort break uh, beaming uh, her picture so that you can see her. Beaming, uh, Johnson uh, beaming uh, her picture so that you can see her. Um, Honourable Chair, members, Advocate Johnson will will certainly uh, give a, a few minutes um, at, towards the end, just just before we close. So she will introduce herself, and you will certainly see her, and she will also say a few lines. If that's okay, okay. Chair, is that in order? Well, that's and if fine. we take the company, she will definitely that's address the. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Chair. Let's come back at 22, 11. Thank you, Chair. Thank you.
Welcome back from our comfort break uh, to all members and also um, our stakeholders and department led by uh, Deputy Minister Gina on the uh, platform today. I have the hands of Honorable Mulder, Honorable McPherson, Honorable Tring, Honorable Mbuyani, Honorable Moatse, Honorable Malam. Malamecha, Honorable Mutaung, and Honorable Tuaku. So, uh, in that order, Honorable Mulder. Thank you, Honorable um, Chair, and uh, also a good morning, colleagues, Deputy Minister, um, DDG, Mrs. Fabs, all the stakeholders. There's lots to be said about the sugar industry. Um, Honorable Minister Patel has answered some questions last week and Wednesday in Parliament during a questions session. We could have a look at the situation that ESCOM is, is actually causing with, with, with instable inability to, to provide constant electricity, the floods, of course, the unrest last year, July, in, in KZN. Um, but I wish to concentrate on one thing, to be short. Um, some other countries, Etswatini and areas, and also the, the deep sea risk imports, and then especially the sugar imports from Mauritius, the threat there. The question I want to ask is, one should be realistic that there are lots of external factors that influences the sugar industry that it can't help for. The sugar industry can only do what they can do. But we have got a situation of wages versus economic growth as well. What My question would be, what is Mauritius doing, for instance? I know they've got different circumstances, but how, how do the deep sea countries and um, Mauritius, for instance, and it's within, how do they manage to be able to export sugar to South Africa, which actually holds a threat to us? I think we should take note of it and um, have a look at what they are doing and how we can adapt to avoid that or to, to, to get all the obstacles out of the way. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Honorable McPherson. Uh, thanks, thanks so much, uh, Chair. Just on a lighter note, when I heard uh, Mrs. Fubbs um, in a committee meeting, it was like deja vu. It sort of uh, had a flash of deja vu from sort of three to half three years ago. In a good way. In a good way. Um, so, so that's just on a lighter note. Um, and le let me then just say that I think from the outset that we all have to appreciate what the immense impact, good or bad, that this industry can have on the economy. Um, and being a member of parliament for for from KZN, I, um, I, I, I understand, I understand the industry somewhat, because I've, you know, as uh, I've grown up uh, amongst the sugar fields, uh, you know, my my what used to be a small town, which is now sort of a a, a growing city almost, uh, you, you know, sugar and sugar cane and sugar farming, has been a a, a very real part of our lives for a very long time. Uh, and, and so, you know, I think that there, there has to be cross-party support for, for, for real uh, plans and programs that look to advance the industry in total, um, as opposed to sort of, you know, certain players or certain sections um, of the industry. And, and that's really what I want to approach uh, my inputs uh, with, Chair, if I may. Because I think that, as someone uh, very aptly put to me, is while the master plan um, is good uh, and, and, and there is, um, you, know, uh, you know, there's good parts of the master plan, you know, master plans are, are sort of um, are only developed after a crisis develops and, 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 and don't really deal with some of the big issues uh, the underlying issues, they sort of deal with the, the symptoms and not the cause. And I think we need to start delving into the cause of some issues uh, that exist with, uh, within sugar. 
And there's no doubt in my mind, Chair, that one of the long outstanding, maybe more than a decade, has been the issue of diversification. And we've spoken about this in the previous parliament. We've spoken about this in this parliament. I raised it last Wednesday in the question sessions with the minister. And we continue to outsource responsibility to minerals and energy when, in fact, it's actually a regulatory issue. That is actually what it needs to be. It says we don't need to develop new legislation. We just need to deal with regulation. And that's what I don't understand is why is it so particularly difficult for us to, to ensure that that takes place. And, 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 you know, we just keep outsourcing it to minerals and you say, well, you know, it's their issue to deal with. And it's almost like ministers in this government sit in different governments. They don't sit in the same cabinet. They don't speak to each other. Officials don't speak to each other. It's truly bizarre. And I think, Chair, that this committee needs to seize itself and say, Bob, when do we want this issue resolved? Because unless we do, we're going to keep being given the runaround uh, by, by officials and, and ministers. And we really need to have concrete uh, answers uh, to that. Because the economics is just not going to uh, make sense uh, as time as time goes by. One of the other issues, Chair, that we, I think we have also had many discussions about, but you know we see this sort of schizophrenic approach to deal with it, is around the the health promotion levy. Now, I have particularly strong views uh, in opposition to the HPL uh, because if it was a health issue, that money would be ring-fenced for the health budget, but it's not. It is for the general revenue fund. And so it is nothing other than a cash cow for government at the expense of the industry and workers. And we know at the last count that it cost the industry over a billion rand and a few thousand jobs. And so we've never been presented with anything that shows uh, what is, you know, further job losses? What is the further sh uh, cost to the economy? We have no idea what evidence was used, in fact, to 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 determine the suitability of a of a of a sugar tax, and 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 we again we need to seize ourselves with this issue, because again the department say well it's a healthcare issue, it's a treasury issue, and it's again it's like no one sits in the same cabinet, and I think that that is a huge, huge problem that is just not receiving the kind of attention uh, that it uh, that it needs to. But for, and, and this is my last point, if I may, Chair, is that the industry, I think, is on a precarious edge at the moment, and it can go either way. And without a, 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 a focus on increasing capacity across the various sectors of the industry, whether it is diversification, whether it is milling, and we've heard that milling is an important part. Uh, and there's a surplus we now know of, uh, of, of 2 million tons that can't be milled or can't be crushed by the mills. You know, unless we deal with those problems, this industry is going to be a sunset industry and not a sunrise industry. And that would be a terrible, terrible thing for my province my constituents and the country at whole. And so I really implore us, Chair, and, and the one thing I've always said, I'm, I'm greatly impressed by your hands-on approach, by your attention to detail and your willingness to deal with issues, is that this committee has to take this in, has to take the, these matters into our own hands because it's clear to me that the departments are unwilling to do so. They fob us off, they give us every reason why they can't have a discussion or why they can't deal with it within their own departments. It's clear that there is interministerial uh, 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 divergence on these issues, and that's a problem. And so I really ask, Chair, that we take uh, take this on and we become the champions of it with the different role players. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable McPherson. Honorable Thring. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, certainly also it was good to hear the voice of uh, Mrs. Fobbs. It takes me way back to 2013 when I sat on the 
uh, Trade and Industry Portfolio Committee for a brief period. Um, so really good to to see that she's sounding strong and, and healthy. And I ho certainly hope that she is. Um, Chair, uh, like uh, Mr. Honorable McPherson, I too have uh, grown up within the, the sugar area. My family is from the Stanga area, which is uh, still sugarcane area. My uh, members of my family were managers within the mills or supervisors within the mills. And one is now still working within the sugar industry, but in the Taiwan, uh, Taiwan area. And so within the family, there's also this history with regards to, uh, to the sugar industry. Um, and so it is somewhat close, close to, our, to, to my heart, um, having grown up also within, within the greater uh, Durban area, Stanga, and then coming down to Durban. Um, but just maybe four or so questions. The first is with respect to diversification of biofuels, um, uh, diversification, biofuels, looking at other value chains. What are the impediments? This is a question to the department. What are the impediments and, and how can these impediments be dealt with? Um, so removing those impediments to ensure that we can fast track towards uh, diversification. Um, secondly, I think the, the sugar tax um, or the HPL uh, has had an impact on the sugar industry. Um, uh, causing previous buyers of, of sugar to move to alternatives. Um, so does the department uh, support, and I've heard this, a call for a moratorium um, on, the, on the HPL, the sugar tax. And so does the department support this call? Um, and are, are there talks with, with our sister departments like, like Treasury um, to, to look at the uh, mitigating the effects of legislation, you know, the HPR legislation on the, on the sugar industry. Um, and then what is the third question is, what is the role of the beverage industry in, uh, in supporting the sugar industry? Because I think because of the HPL, um, many of your uh, beverage industries have moved to alternates to sugar. Uh, and some of those alternatives that they are using are far more harmful uh, than, than sugar itself. Uh, so, so what is the role of the beverage industry? What are the discussions? And, and I've heard that Coca-Cola is looking at taking, uh, purchasing, particularly with your small, small scale growers and, and purchasing from them. Uh, but are there, are there other uh, beverage uh, industries besides Coca-Cola that, um, are looking at supporting the sugar industry. And then finally, um, the, uh, the Sugar Act legislation. Um, many have indicated that, that uh, this is still an, an apartheid uh, type legislation uh, because it goes way back to the 1960s or 70s uh, and it's in, in need of amendment. And what, what progress is there um, looking at uh, that type of legislation that needs to be amended. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Thring. Honorable Mbuyani. Chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Chair, let me also uh, welcome the presentation. It's very much compressive. Uh, and also acknowledge uh, Ms. Fabs, our former chair of the committee. Uh, Chairperson, uh, let me start with the small scale growers. Uh, they need more assistance than any other growers in this field. And also the issues around the daily uh, rateable deliveries. Can this be clarified or explain what is this process? Uh, how can we be able to rate the deliveries on a daily basis? Whilst we know exactly that in terms of the transformation uh, agenda, this is not possible. Is there any way that you can manage this process of uh, rateable deliveries or we do away with it? because it brings uh, challenges to the small scale growers. Yeah, sure. There's a serious need to review the sugar act. I agree with uh, the latter speaker, uh, our pastor there, 
really we need to uh, review this sugar act we cannot be able to be managed by this law of 1978 while we're dealing with transnational agenda seriously and if you can look chaperson this forms part of the legacy report of this committee we need to really uh, review and check where are we in terms of implementing this uh, committee le legacy report in terms of reviewing this act. Uh, the other one chair is the regulation that we introduce to allow for transformation. Uh, can we be clarified whether this regulation is temporary or it's permanent? After this, what is going to happen? We still have to uh, review again and then and, and, what is transformation? The transformation is it's minimal or it's temporary or it's a permanent transformation. Then that we, we, we need to, to, to get uh, clarity on that one as well. Uh, there's a matter chair that we also uh, really need to have uh, a look at it. The issues of joint committee meeting with this department. We have a department of health, which is part of these issues. Department of finance, which is part of these issues and the Department of Agriculture with regard to the issue of the sugar tax. We really need to have a joint committee meeting where you'll be able to understand and get more clarity as to what is it that we, we, we want to achieve in terms of the Sugar Promotion Act or the, the Sugar Act or the Health and the, 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 the Department of Agriculture. Chair, it is more, most important uh, for us to have interdepartmental uh, because we need to work together. This is one government. There's no way we can uh, uh, leave these uh, departments working in silos while we, we, we are in one government. It is imperative, Chairperson, uh, to co-govern because really now we're dealing with these matters of sugar tax and, and so forth as one department. But there are a lot of departments that must be aligned to this one, including finance, including uh, health, and and, 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 and so forth. Uh, the achievement uh, uh, by the master plan value chain, it's acceptable, Chairperson. But it cannot be eroded uh, by other departments uh, in working in, in silos. Uh, the other one, let me welcome the invitation by the Ken Growers for oversight. Uh, and also interested, man, in knowing how many persons with disabilities that they have. And also check how many hectares they manage there as, 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 as small growers. Okay, maybe the last one is the issue of diversification. Let me agree for the first time with the uh, Honorable Mark Fessen. We, we have been speaking about this matter for a very long time. Can we check and have what is the timeline and the, what is the committee that is doing in dealing with this matter? Because really we cannot talk of diversification for forever. We must have timelines. When are we going to see this diversification uh, done because you must also be able to be measured in actual progress as to where are we and what is it that we want to achieve in terms of this diversification. I'll pause there for now. Thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Honorable Moatsi. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, Climate change poses a serious threat to the environment and livelihoods. If the flood in KZN are anything to go by, has the department done a analysis of how climate change will impact the sugarcane industry? And chair, what happened? Or, no, uh, what proactive measures are being employed to protect the industry moving forward? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Malamacha. Thank you, Chair. 
let me take this opportunity to follow suit and welcome the presentation. Hold on. Honorable Moatsi, please mute. I want to, am I audible, Chair? Yes, you may continue. Okay, I want to make it upfront that I've got a serious problem of network. Should I not be audible and I'm stepping the meeting, you can pause. However, there are a few questions that I want to raise. It will start by saying, as much as we will desire that the neighboring states, if not countries such as Swaziland, is doing good in terms of the sugar plantation and the sugar growing important, parties must start to realize and understand that there is a need in South Africa the, of the release of land. That is why we time and again and say, let's work together to release the land, in particular the land that is in the hands of the few who are not necessarily utilizing it. The day we agree to release that land and make this activity fashionable is the day we will beat the Swaziland and other countries. But as long as we still politicize the issue of land, when we say let's release land because we are not utilizing it, whatever condition we give, let's grow the economy. I think that will be the day we stop admiring other countries because we are more capable. And one was also touched to realize that uh, the sister department by what it is is also coming in. But we are pushing to say other political parties be ready to work with her when we say we want this portion of land to do the following so that we do good. Uh, Comrade Chair, the other question that I really want to pose is the Competition Commission, its economic concentration report has noted that there's a broader participation on a small scale sugar grower who are mainly black. However, most sugar cane is delivered by a small percentage of farmers, the majority of whom are whites. What is being done to correct this to include the broader participation of the black people? Exactly what I said, Kumri. That will be my question. Then the last question, Chairperson, will be considering the commencement, I mean, the commencement of the African continental free trade area and the opportunity it presents. What are the interlinkages that are being utilized to the creation of value chain across the continent as it relates to the sugar cane production? Notwithstanding that the rule of origin of the Afkapta did not include the sugar. Thank you very much, Comrade Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Malamacha. Uh, Honorable Motaung. Thanks, Chair, for the opportunity. Let me join uh, the members who have just welcomed the report. I'm partly covered by Honorable Mbuyani. I have only one question. Uh, Chairperson, I noted that uh, 19,188 black sugarcane growers have been supported to the tune of 44 million. What has been the impact of this grant to these farmers and how many jobs have been created? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Mutawu. Honorable Swaku. Honorable Swaku have to raise his questions, Chair. I'm here. Oh. <laughs> And no, thank, thank you very you. much. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, th th thanks for the time. And uh, let me greet my members there uh, and also the stakeholders that are here. Chairperson, I think that, uh, you know, let me agree with my comrade there, uh, comrade Mbuyan, and uh, also comrade uh, Mama Malek. Uh, I think that I, I, I thought that maybe I was in some EFF meeting somewhere and say these comrades are giving actually very revolutionary and uh, a very good inputs in terms of always siding with the poor and also siding to those who are weak. And the issue of the, I wanted to, to, to check, number one, the issue of the, the these daily deliveries, because the way I understand them is that, uh, you know, they're actually benefiting those who are, large scale you know you know uh, you know the producers of this uh, you know this uh, canes and all of that 
But now, what about the small-scale farmers? If you have a large meal, why don't you say, okay, I've got small-scale farmers. Let me go and get a small uh, a meal because you can get those uh, um, uh, in India and somewhere in China as well. You can put them there so that they don't have to wait for their turn and maybe wait and all this kind of stuff like that. But we need to look, and this committee, I think that it must take a decision that it instructs the, the department that it look, go and do a search in terms of the smaller meals for the small-scale farmers. So they don't have to wait and wait and wait for, you know, uh, so that they can actually meal their stuff. It's something very simple. Those comrades there in the DTI, uh, what are they there for? They are, they, you know, the, the researchers there who can actually, this is something very simple. When I was told about this thing, I'm like saying, okay, but why don't you go and get a small meal? Why have to wait for a bigger meal and wait and wait and wait and wait? So it's actually counter, you know, it's actually counter, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, um, uh, 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 revolutionary, this thing. And also it's sabotaging small-scale farmers, especially black, and it cannot be allowed. It must never be allowed. The time frames, chair, they, there's a very colorful, this presentation coming from DTIC, a very colorful and extremely wordy. Now, but when you look and change, but okay, sharp, what are the time frames? They don't come back with concrete time frame. This is an activity. This is what we're going to achieve by when. So we're going to be circulating and circulating, chair. I've seen many of these, it looks like it's a, it's a trend. Maybe they want to confuse us or something. Maybe they think that maybe we don't read. Maybe that that's why I get, you know, these, uh, these, uh, you know, these, uh, uh, you know, the documents a day before or maybe on the day of the presentation. Because you try to find yourself, what are they talking about? And the question is, do they actually know what they're talking about? Or maybe it's a full of some excuses because their presentation don't have time frames, Chair. And I know that this thing has been circulating for years now. Why can it not get finished? We, maybe we must put it on their, uh, you know, on, on their APPs. One of the APPs is like, well, finalize whatever you are doing, this sugar uh, thing is not the, you know, the, 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 the this master plan, plan. Another one, Chair, can they do an impact study on the sugar tax on the small scale? I'm interested on, on the small scale farmers. What impact will this sugar tax have on the small scale uh, 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 farmers there? And uh, maybe they can come back to us. I agree with my comrades there that let us probably get other departments a joint meeting to present in terms of what do they seek to achieve about this actual tax, all the, you know, the, the, the treasury, the health, and all the kind of stuff like that. I agree with that. Maybe we can have that meeting so that we can caucus and say, this is what we want to achieve and like that. Like maybe we can uh, find a, 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 a place where maybe we can meet with each other. I don't know, Chair, um, does the, the department actually understand biofuels? Uh, um, um, where do you use, uh, where does the sugar maybe come into the biofuels uh, and, 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 and all of that. Do you understand the complexity of biofuels? Now, what I know, maybe they can correct me. You take that sugar cane and make molasses or something like that. And then from there, you, you actually ferment it. When you ferment it, you form what is called bioethanol. Now, that bioethanol can be used as an octane booster for the fuel. Now, if you understand, if you read many articles on biofuels, there are many companies or motor, motor industry sectors, BMW, whatever, all of them. They're actually not keen to sign a warranty on, on the fuels which are boosted with bioethanol. Now, the, and then also other industries have a problem with the bioethanol, if I still remember my literature very well. Now, question is, are you, are you fundraising an excuse? Is there a fundraising of excuse of not completing this sugar master plan? Is this another delaying tactic and or maybe you're putting standing in the works? Understand the biofuels. What is it? What is it actually? You know, so, so you must understand the, the, those kind of things. And because I see people throwing words of biofuel, bio, bio year, bio year. I'm like, do these people understand that this is a very complex uh, issue? Extremely very complex. So, and, and then there was a moratorium on the government because they say that you cannot use food great stuff for the fuels. There was a white paper or a green paper that was issued way back about 10 years ago 
Nothing is happening on Biofuels. Dream on. Nothing is probably going to be happening anytime soon. And the approval of using those things into fuels and everything, dream on. It's not going to happen for now. BMW is not going to issue a warrant on their cars to be to be to be to be to be spiked with that, uh, you know, that bioethanol. Comrade Umar Lecha, I agree with him. Expropriate the land, release the land. There's a, a lot of land there that is not being used. People they have acres and acres of land. And I don't want to call them out because in the next meeting, if they're actually trying to deal with the black farmers. We'll actually call them out. This, uh, you know, a, 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 a issue in the sugar industry dealing with black farmers and actually dealing with black people is going to come to a stop because I actually got very serious news about in terms of how black people are being sabotaged in terms of this in industry. It's actually, it, it, it's not very nice. It's not, a, a, you know, because, in, in, you know, 20, 26 years down the line, after this democracy, we're not expecting people to act in a manner that are going to be, you know, uh, you know, this, you know, discriminating, you know, black uh, 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 in 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 the in the in the in the industrialist. So we must release the land. You know that issue of expropriation of land for expropriation of land without compensation for the benefit of public. It must be done. So if you saying that that in the constitution is there, practice it because it says yeah, constant, okay, expropriation without public, you know, a thing is, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's for the land without compensation for public use. So that land is for public use. You got black farmers who want land and small scale farmers. By the way, small scale farming care, to be honest with you, is the, it's one of the, it has been proven that it's one of the ways of creating massive employment. So if this committee is not on the side of the small scale farmers, we are wasting our time saying that we want to create jobs and all of that. So we must put weight on supporting small-scale farmers and do everything in our power to inject money and ensure that they are operating in this in the industry. So I agree with my comrade, the manager. Expropriate that land. Give it for use. We can. We've been planting. We can plant. Most of these things, there's no skills. There's no skills here. What, what, what? We can, we can plant these things. Let us get the land so that we're able to, 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 to have more scale farmers more scale farmers, more massive job people are going to be employed. That's my contribution, Chair, for now. Uh, but I hope that we will actually have more chance to, to really have a workshop. We must have a workshop so that, and the minister must stop this thing of presenting and running away here. Because he just addresses us here and then he runs away. So we must have time that we can address him and tell him, hey, my man, when are you going to finish one, two, three, and four and commit? Was he addresses here and say, hey, sorry, I have to go somewhere like that. I have to go. I'm, I'm addressing in the car now. But I respect the, the, this committee because I have my constitutional duty. So he mustn't come here and then do the introduction and then runs away here because we want to get his commitment. When is he going to do this and finalize all of these issues? Because there's no job here. People there, you know, we have a bloodbath. And this committee is supposed to be creating jobs and, and finishing things. But was circulating around and getting all this kind of stuff like that. Thank you very much, Chef. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Tswaku. Um, just by way of correction, I don't think the department can be held responsible for you getting late documents. We said that will be sorted out by um, the Secretariat. Also, the minister did uh, come to the committee, did give us a reason why he's leaving, and it was accepted by the Portfolio Committee. Nobody uh, tabled any uh, objection to that. So um, the department is very able and the ministry is very ably uh, re uh, represented in this meeting by DM Gina. DM, over to you and then I will ask you then to, uh, together with your team, um, answer the questions raised by members. Over to you, DM Gina. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much even for the comments because most the others were mostly comments on the presentation and the discussions that you are having today on the sugar industry and also the questions that have been raised. Uh, Chair and the members of the committee, <clears throat> one thing that I, I, I will say as the department we pride ourselves with when it comes to this industry is the high level of the relationship and the working relations that we have with the role players in this industry 
Hence, we have even had uh, some of our role players even presenting, yes, we might be having challenges, we might be raising challenges, but there are so many things that we are saying together. What is it that we do to make sure that when it comes to this industry, of which we all understand it's one of the very important industries contributing a lot in the economy of the country, but what are the things that we do together in making sure that we transform the industry, we, 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 <clears throat> we, we, we go through the challenges together that the industry might, might be faced with, like the question of the issue of diversification. It's no, there is no way a department is imposing as to say this is how we need to diversify and so forth and so forth. But we sit together with the role players, we sit together with the experts that are working within the industry in making sure that those are the discussions and we are saying what is it that we can do as a country in making sure that when we want to change the image, when we want to change the plight that the sugar industry is faced with, together we do that. So uh, some of the questions are really in the comments, yes, we really agree, we take them, but we must clarify that issue as to say, there is no way where we are saying, yes, the department really, we just run uh, and we lead and we leave behind the role players in the industry. We are having a lot, of, as we are saying, now and again, we even have the, the, the executive oversight committees where we have open, brutal, and honest discussions when it comes to the ways that we can change the industry. At the end, where we're all focusing at the issues of transformation and what is it that we want to do to make sure that we change the plight, we change the, 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 the way industry is being perceived and the challenges that we look at, we, we are faced with as the industry. Same thing that as it comes to the issue of land. Yes, it might not be the competency of Trade and, industry, trade industry and competition, but we know that we are highly affected when it comes to that. That is why, as the department also, we even take part in the ministerial task uh, team at uh, the committee that deals with the issue of land. Even the, before the end of this month, we are led by the deputy president of the country. Even before the end of this month, we are going to be having the land in Daba because that is where we all agree that the the the, the it forms the collarbone and the cornerstone of the economy of the country. So there's so much that we hope and believe we are going to be getting out of that Indaba, where all the stakeholders, traditional leadership, parties, uh, industries, different industries, we are going to be part of that. We've lost Dean Gina, or is it my network? I don't, I don't think so, Chair. I think that we have okay. lost. Uh, yeah, uh, but she's still there. The answering of questions. Okay. Then, back. when it comes to the issues of uh, the uh, African Continental Free Trade Agreement, the, 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 the questions around the issues of SACO and so forth, come, uh, Cloudy. We'll, we will be leading uh, in addressing uh, uh, those questions. Then DDG Lerato will come in and will sum up at the end. Let, let, us, let us lead like that. Nomisa, uh, can, you, can you come in? Are you muted? No, I'm not. Yes, uh, yes uh, the Deputy Minister, and, um, and uh, uh, good morning. Um, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, Deputy Minister, and all protocol observed. Um, I must just indicate that um, in terms of the implementation of this master plan, we have uh, put in place a team of expertise to lead, I think, some of, I mean, the issues, very important issues that have been raised by the members. And um, those issues are being addressed in terms of, you know, uh, you know the different um, uh, task teams. And as I try to respond to some of the questions, I would request, uh, with your permission, um, Honorable Chair, to bring along the, the conveners of some of these task teams uh, to give more questions the work of this, um, in terms of the work of the different task teams uh, who are sort of dealing with, I think, the crucial issues that have been raised by the members of this portfolio committee. To start first with the questions from 
Honorable Malda, I think there's a question around the uh, issue around Mauritius as well as Eswatini. I think that question relates mostly, I think, to uh, the increase in imports, especially from Eswatini, and also the fact that the Mauritius has requested a increased a quota access uh, uh, in terms of, I mean, um, access to the domestic market. So that issue already in terms of task team number one of the master plan, which is dealing with the SACO harmonization um, uh, 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 is on the table. It's being discussed. Hence, there's a position regarding the Mauritius demands for increased uh, quota access, which has been developed for government approval. So we are indeed uh, quite aware of that I mean, threat in terms of imports. But at the same time, the issue around Eswatini um, uh, honorable members is indeed a, a big issue in terms of uh, imports uh, from Eswatini. Hence, we have, I think, a uh, that was talked about development of proposal for engagement with Eswatini. And that proposal will be tabled at the Soviet Council of Ministers, and, uh, which is looking at the proposal for the long term solution, mainly to look at the harmonization program between the two countries instead of you know the two big producing countries competing with each other. And some of the issues that are, are, are we are dealing with in terms of that, I mean, testing, it's mainly around the regional value chain, the regional integration in terms of the, the sugar trade or sugar value chain. So, so indeed, that made uh, Honorable Malta is on top of the agenda in terms of Sakwanization custom number one. In terms of exports, I want to give it to Judith, but just to indicate that uh, sugar exports. Can really you just good. move us? Can you just move closer to the microphone? Because I okay. think you're turning your head or so you. you're losing you from time to time. Thank you. Oh. Apologies, uh, honorable members. Uh, the issue around um, the, the exports, uh, I must indicate that um, uh, we've got uh, Judith uh, Wilson, who is going to, as well as FISO, who are responsible for the external affairs of the sugar industry. But I must indicate that in terms of the EU market, the industry has uh, been always able to utilize the whole quota whole quota, and um, uh, we are talking about almost 150,000 tons of sugar that has been exported free. At the same time, we've managed also to utilize the U.S. I mean, uh, quota. We are talking about almost 22,000 tons of sugar that has been exported to the U.S., including, by the way, the sugar that has been exported to some of the Saudi countries. Judith, can I give it to you there just to give more context in terms of the current export? But I must indicate that uh, the, uh, the sugar that we're exporting current, we're exporting at a loss due to depressed, I mean, well, prices of sugar. Judith, can I give it to you with your permission, uh, Honorable Member, as well as FISO? Before I can move to the next questions. Okay, Ms. Wilson. Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, thank you for the opportunity of responding in support of Namisa um, on Honorable Mulder's question. I think that the question really related to why does it seem that other countries are able to produce sugar so inexpensively and on that basis export it to South Africa below South Africa's cost of production. And I think to be clear, the world market of sugar is a surplus market. So in fact, no sugar producer in the world is selling export sugar at the price that they um, that, that it cost them to produce it. And um, people are selling su export sugar. So these are countries such as Brazil, India, the big exporters are selling at prices well below what it cost them to produce that sugar. And this is largely because they have other subsidies and other support that's available to them within their countries. Those subsidies can be export subsidies, which are direct subsidies given to them by their governments to promote their agricultural um, exploits, as is the case in India, or in the case of Brazil, where there's a co-program with ethanol, where there is subsidization in terms of the total revenue received through ethanol production um, for the cane producers. So it is a very challenging market to operate in, and most and almost all producer home markets are protected by a tariff. Um, because otherwise they wouldn't be able to sell sugar in their own home market. So just to explain that, I think in terms of Eswatini and Mauritius, both of those organized or, or countries, sugar, um, um, sugar industries were set up on the basis of their ability to be able to export to the U European Union. Um, and they were able to do this at very remunerative prices. 
over the last several years, seven years or so, those prices have fallen dramatically. And so those countries have now turned their attentions to more local markets where they could try to sell their, their extreme volumes of excess sugar. For example, Eswatini produces between 700 and 800,000 tons of sugar, but only uses about 60,000 tons of that themselves. The rest is for exports and traditionally was sold into very remunerative EU markets. Now it's being channeled to a large extent um, into, the, into the South African market, which is challenging for us. Um, so just to make that clear that the, 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 the cost at which sugar is exported or the, 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 the price that export sugar is sold at is in no way indicative of what it costs to produce it. And in fact, South Africa is amongst the top 25 most cost effective cane producers uh, or sugar producers of sugar from sugar cane um, in the world of over 120 producers of sugar. We are amongst the, the most in, um, inexpensive producers. Unfortunately, the dynamics of the world market and this heavy overload of sugar in the world create a situation where sugar is sold or dumped below its cost of production. Thanks, Jay. Thank you very much. Um, who is the next person, Honorable Mkhrawli? Sorry, not Honorable Mkhrawli, Ms. Mkhrawli. Uh, uh, thanks, Chair. I think we covered the in terms of the okay. questions from Honorable Malda. Then we can move to the questions from uh, Honor, Honorable Matt Pearson. Uh, I think there are three questions there. The one that deals with uh, the regulations, especially the diversification regulations. And then there's a question that deals with health issues. Uh, I think the frustrations around there. And then uh, the whole biofuels, I mean, uh, I mean, a uh, uh, framework. Just to indicate that in terms of the regulations, we have uh, commenced with that work, if you remember members, I think a uh, years back. And now we have the transitional uh, arrangements in place in terms of the sugar regulations, which are expiring in the next uh, uh, two years. So those regulations, they don't include the, the sort of the downstream diversification uh, products. So we are in terms of the master plan process, uh, looking at uh, amendments of the regulations to accommodate the diversification, I mean, products like uh, the, the biofuels, I mean, program to accommodate bioplastics uh, and so on and so forth. So that work is being, I mean, uh, championed by the, the SASA, which is South African Sugar Association. Uh, but uh, South African Sugar Association, but it has just, I mean, commenced. We're waiting for the inputs from all the task teams, the 10 task teams, so as to make sure that when we start the amendments, we've considered all the amendments uh, related to both the upstream as well as the downstream um, uh, diversification. So, uh, but at the same time, I must indicate that uh, there is a biofuels framework that has been approved by the cabinet. And uh, in place, we've got the biofuels task team, which is looking mainly at the diversification, downstream diversification, especially when you look at the bioethanol, I mean, program. So, and um, the main issues there in terms of, I mean, diversification support, it's mainly the two subsidies that we are proposing, which is the, um, the, the, subsidy, the subsidy for farmers, as well as the manufacturing subsidy to support the, the farmers, mainly using sugarcane as a feedstock in terms of the biofuels program. But the biggest challenge is to make sure that NT is able to sort of provide the sort of the capital that is needed to set up uh, some of the infrastructure in relation to the biofuels program. So we still uh, on an engagement with the, the, uh, the National Treasury around uh, the biofuels um, subsidies uh, to ensure that diversification is actually indeed in, in place in South Africa. As you would know that the biggest countries like Brazil, they've moved ahead in terms of the bioethanol uh, program. So we want to follow the suit uh, in that regard, so that the industry is not only focusing in one revenue stream, which is mainly the sugar. They can look at other revenue stream, more importantly, the ethanol, I mean, a program, but that uh, goes hand in hand with the cost. We need to make sure that there is subsidy involved in terms of supporting those, I mean, those, I mean, interventions. As Judith has indicated that Brazil and, and India, they are heavily subsidized countries. So we really need to look at that in order for us to, for, for us to be in full scale in terms of the biofuels program. 
the issues around the health promotion levy, I must indicate that um, we uh, this is a very complex, I mean, policy of government because we're looking at the balance in terms of uh, the health, I mean, needs of our communities versus, of course, the growth of the sugar industry. And I must indicate what is appreciative for us is that when we sort of um, requested for an intervention in terms of the exemption uh, around the increased, I mean, increase in the sugar tax in, in the first three years of the implementation of the health uh, 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 implementation, or sorry, of the sugar master, uh, uh, sugar value chain master plan. Uh, the treasurer, they managed to hear us as a result, uh, the industry has been exempted in terms of the increase in the sugar taxes over, I think, the, the first three, in terms of the first three years of the implementation, but there's still a lot of engagements that we have to do. Hence, I think, asking that's team number seven, which is uh, looking at the sugar policy, is dealing with those issues. Can I give it to Ian uh, or Nostello to give us a, a more context uh, in terms of the deliberations or the recommendations that Task Team is making in terms of the, the sugar tax policy gaps and more importantly on the sort of studies that are being uh, presented at NEDLEC level as well as the technical dietary study that is being undertaken by the Department of Health to look at um, uh, the interventions around the sugar tax and noting for a fact that the, we are quite aware of the frustrations around this, but we appreciate the fact that the sugar tax increase has been delayed for another year, which gives more opportunity to the industry to look at the diversification, I mean, uh, projects. And uh, Nostello, can I give it to you, uh, Madam? That is the work of task team number seven. Or oh, Ian, let me just give it to Ian. I can see Ian is on the call. Ian? Through you, Madam Chair. Thank you, okay, Ms. Mr. Shield. Thank Ian you. is the yes. yes, just to indicate, Ian is a convener for task team number seven that deals with sugar um, and tax policy. Ian, over to you. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Um, with your indulgence, I'll allow the um, ED of the Beverage Association, also a member of the Task Team 7, to, to speak to this point. Uh, if he's able to, that would be Mpo. Is Mpo on the, on the platform? Let me can just... you just unmute so that we can see if he's here? I don't know if I'm Mr. audible. Oh, Mr. Yes. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, quickly, um, thank you for the opportunity to talk to this issue. Um, we've been doing quite a number of, uh, um, uh, we've been involved in quite a number of initiatives to, show, to make sure that our industry plays an active role in helping with, uh, you know, the problems experienced by the sugar industry in particular. We have made commitments to procure our sugar locally. We have uh, committed to increasing our local procurement of sugar to 95% in the third year of the implementation of uh, the Sugar Master Plan. We have actively uh, taken giant strides in this role. We have taken membership with Proud South African. Uh, we are, our industry is now a member of Proud South African to ensure that we take keen uh, uh, interest and active participation in resolving the issues experienced uh, as a result of mainly the sugar, um, the, the, H, the HPL. We are hoping that, um, Chair, that the Department of Health will come on board in engaging us and allowing us an opportunity to, to state our case, including the National Treasury, because we don't seem to be getting uh, an active uh, participation from their side in our platforms to come and share with us what uh, the critical data relating to the impact of the real impact of uh, sugar of sugar tax has been. We have presented to them, and I think we now need to share that study with the, the portfolio committee. If the portfolio committee hasn't received that study, there was a study conducted by NetLeg on the socioeconomic impact of the sugar tax in, the, in its first year of implementation. Needless to mention, Chair, that the results are not appetizing. Um, we 
we, we see that report stating that there were about 16,600 job losses uh, directly linked to the sugar tax. So we, we then therefore chair, um, continue to participate and, and pledge all our, what's needed as a, as a sector in as far as uh, helping this uh, situation. Chair. We, we were expecting chair, by now that we would have received from the Department of Health and a total dietary intake study which was one of the commitments that were made when the sugar tax were, was implemented to say, if there are any ad adjustments to be made in future in as far as the sugar tax is concerned, that those or those adjustments should be backed by science, a scientific study. So the total dietary intake study is supposed to come with the results that says, what are the dietary intakes, uh, what are the dietary patterns of South Africa or of South Africans? What are the drivers of obesity and uh, and uncommunicable disease? And we we share the, the results and debate based on that on science directly linked to the South African dynamics, not what we we read about uh, what's happening in America and many other parts of the world. So we're still waiting for that study, Chair. We hope that study will be conducted and finalized, and we we are roped in, uh, in, in, in the process of deliberating on the results and paving a, a better way forward in, in addressing, uh, you know, uh, the issues around uh, non-communicable diseases. We, we are, however, deeply concerned as well, Chair, that we don't seem to be getting uh, the same uh, level of support from National Treasury that doesn't seem to be in support or, uh, or in alignment with uh, the, the, the sugar master plan. They don't seem to be recognizing the sugar master plan uh, to a point we've seen earlier this year when Treasury decided to uh, unilaterally go ahead and you know deviate from the agreement emanating from the sugar master plan. And they announced the increase of the sugar uh, tax, uh, which was eventually uh, reversed after a number of engagements. So we are quite concerned that there's no alignment or uh, communication between various departments uh, as to what needs to happen in as far as uh, HPL is concerned. Uh, one department knows that this should happen. The other department doesn't know what should happen. So that's, that's basically what our concerns are. And we hope that we will be engaged uh, and will be included in the discussions around further adjustments uh, or any further moratorium in as far as it relates to sugar, uh, must sugar tax. Uh, 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 on chair. I hope I've covered ground and I try to cover s some of the uh, elements uh, from um, Honorable McPherson and Honorable uh, 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 Wayne Twin uh, on, on, on sugar tax. I, I think yes. I've managed to cover some of the elements. Thanks. Um, uh, uh, thank you, Honorable Chair, and thanks, um, Paul, for that I mean, comprehensive response. But just also to indicate that in terms of the technical dietary intake study, uh, we have engaged the Department of Health. They have not yet started with that study. Uh, they are expecting that they will commission the study begin, I mean, in this year, which is 2022. But indeed, alignment is very important, especially with the National Treasury around uh, this, I mean, critical, I mean, policy, which impacts, I think, very bad in terms of, I mean, the sustainability as well as jobs in the industry. And then, uh, so the health issues, I've covered them. And then, but I wanted also to cover the issues around diversification. I think those are cross, I mean, cutting issues that have been raised by all the members. Just to indicate that in terms of the master plan process, task team number six is dealing with the value chain diversification. I mean, I would say program large. And um, already the work that is being done by that task team has identified in terms of the research work four major uh, project or diversification stream. Uh, and in the top priority of those diversification, I mean, a, a, a pro project or product is a sustainable aviation fuel. So Thomas Fange will give us more details Chair, around the, the aviation fuel, but more important is to indicate that the four major projects or pro diversification products that have been identified, including 
bioplastics, including the bioethanol I mean, project, including the sustainable aviation fuel in partnership with some of the airlines. They are at the pre-feasibility side because it's important that we need to make sure that we thoroughly investigate. More importantly, we need to have an informed research in terms of you know, what kind of diversification option we should look at. And more importantly, to look at uh, the long-term and the medium-term diversification I mean, options that we have to make sure that the industry is able to, 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 to be sustainable and, and also more importantly, to ensure competitiveness in the industry. So Thomas, who is the convener for Task Team 6, will give us just a um, high level, I mean, a work that we have done in terms of the sustainable aviation fuel, which I see it um, 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 members as a priority uh, kind of, I mean, project, including, by the way, the engine repurpose uh, project, which is going to focus at uh, the uh, ethanol, I mean, uh, program. So that is basically around the downstream value chain and um, downstream diversification proposals that are being made, which are going to be adopted by the executive oversight, I mean, council. Um, uh, Thomas, can I hand over to you about the uh, SAA, SAF as well as the PLA, um, Dr. Governor, if you are able to assist there in terms of that work of that task team. Um, thanks, Chair and members. Um, yes, Dr. Thank Dr. you. Governor. Proceed. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just to, to give an update on TAS Team 6. Proceed, um, we, Dr. Funk. Thank you, Chair. I will proceed. Um, just to give an update on, on TAS Team 6. Um, it is critical, and that's also my view, and it was raised by uh, many honorable members today, that diversification is key to the industry. Without diversification, Chair, we are going to carry on fighting for milling capacity, um, because um, I think it was mentioned earlier that 2 million tons of sugarcane will not be crushed this year. Last year, we had 2.6 million tons of sugarcane that, that weren't crushed. So, and, and that's largely because uh, two sugar mills have closed, and um, we are trying to deal with a future that uh, includes other products other than sugar, so that the industry can get out of ICU and into a more sustainable, sustainable future. So, Chair, um, I hope members can see that uh, this booklet was um, printed and published by um, the WWF, World Wildlife Fund, and Boeing. And, Chair, um, it was released at a conference, and I believe a number of the members on the call were also at that conference uh, two weeks ago at uh, Oatambo. And Chair, the booklet highlights that sugarcane molasses is the most cost-effective product that one can use for sustainable aviation fuels. Chair, I also don't need to remind uh, members today that um, Oatambo is facing a critical shortage of aviation fuels as we speak. And yesterday yes. on um, BBC, there was actually a documentary around Africa facing the shortage. So, so Chair, it couldn't have come at a better time. This is the future. Um, to deal with the subsidies, uh, various uh, countries and continents are enforcing sustainable aviation fuel into the future as they push towards a 2050 carbon neutral economy um, in the airline sector. And Chair, this is going to be a mega trend. We can work with this as the sugar industry. And the, the fastest way and the best way, Chair, to do um, transformation is if um, there are alternative products and if there's sustainable funding in the industry to drive that, Chair. And, and that's why I'm so passionate about this um, SAF, as um, the DTIC has mentioned. It is really the future for the industry that we need to get into products that are not sugar and molasses only, um, but sustainable. And, and that's what Task Team 6 is driving towards. So, Chair, what um, we can do to, um, to accelerate this process is for funding to be made available so that we can finalize the pre-feasibility study and the feasibility study, and that we can find investors who are willing to go into this um, very exciting new industry into the future. So, um, Misa, I hope that that answered the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank and you. Uh, thanks. Shall we give an opportunity to Dr. Gavinder? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank yes, you. Dr. Dr. Gavinder. 
Dr. Governor to cover uh, the other, I mean, downstream uh, products, the, the PLA as well as the sugar cane juice and the engine repurpose project in terms of some of the diversification projects that we are proposing uh, uh, around the value chain diversification program for the industry. Thanks, Chair and members. Uh, Chair, sorry, Tandawaka here from SAFTA. If I can just uh, report that Dr. Marilyn Gavenda is attending another industry meeting at the moment, so she's not available in the meeting to make further comments. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Back to you, uh, okay. Ms. Uh, Crowley. Yes, uh, thanks, Chair. Just to indicate that uh, in terms of the slide 15, uh, the slide that looks like the value chain diversification, we have proposed some of, I mean, the projects that we'll be focusing on. And again, some of the impediments in terms of, I mean, the questions from Honorable Wayne is the funding issue, which is being discussed. And we have um, approached IDC to assist with the pre feasibility study. But more importantly, I think we need, still need to sort out the issues of regulations. Uh, so, bioplastic is one of the projects that is on the, I mean, priority list for diversification as well as the bioethanol, I mean, a, a, a project. So the discussions are ongoing in that regard. And then so that um, um, uh, that um, means that we have covered, I think, the questions from Honorable Wayne. And then I think in terms of the role of beverages, I mean, um, 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 or the industrial users, um, uh, I think they are, they are participating in the downstream diversification, as you would know that, um, they are looking at quite a number of you know, um, uh, products uh, to support in terms of, I mean, the diversification of the industry, products that are related to, I mean, um, um, I mean, the sugar products, as you know, that they are not allowed to use, I mean, a sugar in terms of, I mean, their products, especially beverages. So some of the study that is being done will also look at those options, but more importantly, the study that is being done by beverages company, including the confectionaries to support the diversification, I mean, a, a, a program of, 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 of the sugar industry. And then that also looks to the issues around the Sugar Act legislation of 1978, which already, as I've indicated, there's a provisional, I mean, um, regulations in place, which are expiring now in 2024, and amendments are underway, uh, which, I mean, already the industry has commenced with that. I think we've got Judith uh, there in terms of the amendments of the regulations, but Judith, I will give you only one minute around uh, the new amendments in terms of the Sugar Industry Act as well as the SASA Constitution. Okay, I'm almost done with the questions. Uh, uh, I want. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm not taking much of your time. No, we are we are still good on time. Oh, perfect. Um, who's who's Judith? Judith Wilson. Uh, she's leading a uh, task team that okay. deals with the amendments okay. of the Sugar Act uh, legislation uh, that includes the Sugar Industry Agreement as well as SASA Constitution. Thanks, uh, members. Okay. Ms. Wilson. Honorable Chair, I do apologize for messing you around, but I must ask if one of my colleagues who's better um, educated on this matter be asked to respond, um, the Executive Director of SASA, Trix Trickham, please. Thank you. Can you unmute so that we can see him on? Can, oh, can you hear me, Chair? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Chair, uh, the amendments to the sugar industry agreement um, is being considered with, within the industry. We've, we've uh, only made a start now. Uh, so we do have transitional provisions in the agreement uh, that expire uh, or come to an end at the end of March 2024. And uh, we will we are committed to uh, to uh, make amendments and uh, and submit to the DTIC uh, for 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 approval uh, well before that date. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, does that conclude your responses, uh, Ms. Mkhlaoui? Uh, I will just deal with, uh, I think, the questions, uh, honorable members from Honorable Buyane, uh, in terms of, um, I think, the, there's a question around the, 
uh, daily rateable deliveries. I think the issue there is around the fact that the industry is finding difficult to crush the whole, I mean, cane that is delivered. As I think Thomas has indicated uh, some of the challenges that the industry is faced with. Uh, but the question is, what is the solution? Because um, along the way, the farmers, they are losing money, especially the small scale farmers that are delivering to those, I mean, sugar mills and um, the losing money in that regard. So I think one of the solutions will lie in, in Madam Chair with, uh, with the regulations, amendments of the regulations, so that in terms of the cane that is delivered, we're able to prioritize the small scale farmers the same way that we're prioritizing the small scale farmers. Um, I'm hoping um, uh, uh, Mr. Suresh Naidu have covered that issue. If you think that there's additional issue that we can do in terms of the daily uh, rateable deliveries for sugar cane to make sure that our farmers, they don't suffer. As I think, indicate, as I've indicated um, earlier on, I think uh, through the present, I mean, through, I mean, uh, the presentation uh, that um, made by DDG Larato that one of the challenges of, of the industry is around the shrinking milling capacity. The industry cannot crush all the pain um, um, at the same time. So some of uh, the issues are related to the decline in performance of the some of the milling companies are milling um, uh, plants, and that are related to the issues around cost drivers, including electricity, issues around wage increases, issues around, you know, the, 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 the general performance of the milling company. So the issue around milling companies to get more milling companies, especially the small scale milling company, I think from uh, Honorable Nzwaki, that is a good suggestion that we should look at in terms of the master plan process, how to make sure that support the, the milling of the pain. And then um and then there, there are issues around the transformation regulations to allow for transformation. Are we talking about uh, the permanent transformation or are we talking about the temporal transformation? I will leave that question mainly with the industry, especially Porsche, because you are leading quite a lot of interventions in terms of the transformation, but just to indicate that the industry already is busy with the transformation plan and but more importantly before the master plan process already the industry has made commitments in terms of the transformation of the industry hence we are talking about the one billion rents to assist with the transformation but we need to make sure that there's a permanent transformation in the industry more importantly ownership in terms of land ownership in terms of land ownership in terms of mills, especially by the black players. So that is what the plan uh, in terms of the transformation, I mean, plan that is being proposed has to look at going forward. But let me just give it to Portia a chair around this very important issue, which is dealing with the uh, transformation of the industry. Portia, can I... Um, but uh, wasn't it, uh, didn't you miss Mr. Naidu to speak on, I think... Because you first mentioned, Mr. Naidu, to check whether you've covered um, at the beginning of your of your responses. The issue of the daily rateable deliveries. Yes, yes, yes. We yes. can cover both. Yes, the daily okay. rateable deliveries as well as the issue around the transformation, which is championed by Sasa. Okay, so Naidu, over to Portia you. or Naidu. Yes. We can give it to Naidu and then um, okay. and then Pusha. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, members. Can that person just unmute so that we can see that they are on the platform, Mr. Naidu? Okay, I think let's go to uh, Portia. Portia, yes. Okay. Portia Mpofu. Portia? Ms. Mpofu? There we go. Over to you, Ms. Mpofu. Good afternoon, Chairperson in the Honorable members, uh, thank you, Mr. Mshawoli. Uh, we are dealing with uh, transformation issues in the industry. At this stage, we have appointed a transformation specialist that will assist us to develop a medium to long-term strategy, which obviously builds 
on the basis and the foundation that was built by the industry together with this portfolio committee under the leadership of Ms. Fabs. We are looking at transformation across the value chain. And in the next two to three months, we should have a draft, but it is work in progress and we will be uh, giving an update should uh, when, when the next committee uh, sits and when invited to do so. Thank you very much, Ms. Mshawli. Thanks, uh, Pushia, and thanks, honorable members. Uh, the questions from Honorable Mwazi around the climate change. Um, what, uh, the, I think the question is around what have we done um, uh, in terms of uh, looking at the impact of climate change and the measures to protect uh, uh, the, the sugar industry. I must indicate that this is a very important work that is being done by the, 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 the sugar cane in terms of the crop diversification program, but more importantly to look at uh, uh, investigations around the impact of climate change to the sugar industry. And there are, I think quite a number of measures I think uh, the industry can look at as a proposal, I think from, from, from my side, which are going to be discussed by task team uh, number six and uh, some of the, for example, some of the proposal uh, are mainly around, can we look at, for example, support, uh, especially uh, as a result of, I mean, the disaster that has affected, I mean, the, I mean, the, the farmers. And I think Member Magala spoke about the support that has been provided already, the fact that Minister Didiza, she is on the ground to make sure that farmers are being supported. And I think Member Magala has talked about the issues around infrastructure support, technology, and so on and so forth. But more importantly, I think we need to look at the long-term planning uh, around the, the climate change and more importantly, to make sure that the industry is able to have, I think, some uh, measures in place to protect it against, uh, you know, such, I mean, um, um, uh, sort of uh, occurrences. But let me give it to Thomas, I mean, uh, Frank, just to give us a context as part of the crop diversification, I mean, a study that is being done by BFEP to look at uh, the alternatives, a uh, uh, crop uh, um, uh, diversification, I mean, projects, but more importantly, how best can we address the issue of climate change? Uh, Thomas, are we able to do this study in the near future to look at the climate change part of the SASRI, I mean, uh, intervention? Mr. Funk. Yeah, Chairperson, thank you very much. Um, that is absolute priority. Um, I think the recent floods have highlighted uh, the vulnerability of not just our infrastructure in, in the sugarcane area and I guess KZN as a whole, um, but also of the farming enterprises, especially small scale farmers, um, and how they have set up their farms and their operations and, and how vulnerable they are to, to these climatic events, which in future will just become more. So Chair, as part of the um, aviation fuel study, we will be looking at uh, sustainable practices because we just need to note that for um, SAF, it's all about the S. It's all about the sustainability of the cane farming operations um, for that fuel, and, and that's what the world is needing. Um, Chair, so as part of that study, uh, there will be a lot of focus on mitigating measures um, in terms of certification of your sugar cane in order to ensure that it is produced in a sustainable way. And that links into a risk mitigation around climate change. So um, hopefully that answers the question, but there will be a lot of focus on climate change into the future. Thank you very much. Um, I apologize. It seems as if I'm experiencing network problems. Ms. Mkhawli, over to you. Thanks, uh, members. I think uh, our honourable um, uh, uh, Deputy Minister Gina has covered the issues around, I mean, uh, uh, 
access to land, especially for the small scale farmers, as you would know that these issues are part of the mandate of their right. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Gina, for covering those issues. But more important, I think you've covered very well the issue of release of land, especially for the small scale farmers, as you would know that in terms of the sugar industry, 90% of the land now it's un still under uh, the large scale producers and 10% under the small scale producers, especially when you talk about high potential agricultural land. So this is supposed to be part of the land reform uh, program, uh, which is currently being uh, led by the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. Um, the, uh, I will not cover issues around the continental free trade area. I think Claudia, she will be able to respond to such issues. Uh, let me give it to Claudia quickly, Madam Chair. I think those are some of the issues that have been raised by uh, Honorable Malecha. Uh, uh, Claudia, the issue around the continental free trade area and the rules of origin, but I think partly I've covered in terms of the SACO harmonization program and the proposals that have been put forward, especially around, I think, um, the Mauritius as well as a Swatini harmonization, um, uh, harmonization uh, program. Claudia? Um, thank you very much, um, Chairperson, and uh, good afternoon to all the honorable members. Um, thank you very much for the question posed on the African continental free trade um, area. I think the issues of the so-called harmonization have been covered. Um, maybe just um, to add that we have had initial engagements with um, Eswatini um, and that we have agreed to create a mechanism through which a common approach to sugar um, will be developed, including the development of regional value chains related to sugar, which would be in line with the SACO work program. Um, so that is work that is undergoing and it has been agreed that the, the first meeting would take place um, in June. Um, on the African continental free trade um, area chairperson, um, the rules of origin um, on sugar, which is chapter 17, um, there are 17 uh, broad um, tariff lines. Um, seven of these have been agreed, and that is um, mainly on um, raw sugar um, that have been agreed, and we've agreed under the AFCFDA that those must be wholly obtained in order to be able to benefit from the AFCFDA preferences. Um, some of the, the key lines that remain um, outstanding are lines uh, relating to other sugars, such as those that are um, uh, chemic, uh, uh, in, including chemically or um, pure lactose, um, sugar confectionery, um, and um, molasses. So those are the, the tariff lines on which we have not agreed on rules of origin. Um, and the AFCFDA um, ministers of trade have agreed that this work should be expedited to be concluded by the end of September 2022 with the overall directive that the rules that we agree um, on the AFCFDA must um, encourage or provide a platform for the creation of regional value chains, and they must incentivize investment in our economies so that we can um, increase beneficiation and our production ba base on the continent. Um, so it is expected that that work would be concluded by the end of September as directed by the ministers of trade. And of course, on this basis, we would be able to finalize um, the tariff schedules for um, the liberalization um, of trade under the AFCFDA. Um, thank you very much, Chairperson and Honourable Members. Thank you. Um, Ms. McLeowley. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm hoping I'm still on time in terms of, I mean, the, um, the responses, Chair. Um, yes, you have time still. You may continue. Yeah. Thank you, honorable members. The, there's a question around, um, again, from honorable Malecha around uh, the inclusion, uh, especially on the broader participation of uh, black uh, people. Uh, I think it's a competition, I mean, a study or a, a study that has been commissioned by the Competition Commission. Uh, the transformation task team um, is going to deal with those issues. I think as I think um, uh, Koshia has alluded to the issue around the transformation plan that is being proposed by the industry. 
which I think the study will be completed towards the end of this year, and it will definitely deal with the issues of uh, the broader participation of Black people, especially along the value chain, including uh, the milling section of the industry, the industrial, I mean, um, side of the industry. So uh, especially in terms of the ownership as well as I think the land uh, issues. Um, I think those, I mean, from the, uh, are the questions from Honorable Malecha and then Honorable Motawong, I think there's a question around uh, the 19,188 like, uh, sugarcane farmers that have been supported and 44 million rents that has been allocated, I think, in 2020 and 2020. What has been the impact there? I think um, one of the work that needs to be done by um, uh, the task team uh, four, which is dealing with transformation, will be to look at the impact study around, um, I think, the allocation of funds, especially the transformation funds that we've talked about, the 200 million that was allocated in 2021 and 2022. So uh, the industry has indicated that they'll be able to share that information with you. And the study uh, is underway as we speak to look at the impact of that, I mean, um, a billion rents, including, by the way, uh, the 44 million that has been allocated to 19,188 black farmers. Poshia, are you able to give more details around the 19,188 black farmers? Oh, sorry, uh, 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 let me give it to Member Madala. Member Madala? Apologies, I wasn't, uh, I didn't catch that one. What am I answering on? Uh, yeah, the 19,188 black farmers that have been supported through uh, the transformation fund, the 44 million rents. I'm talking about the transformation okay. fund. Yes. All right, thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, by your, your, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, that, that intervention was introduced in light of uh, small-scale farmers. Um, the, payment, the payment model in the industry is such that we are paid um, all, all, all small or, or commercial farmer paid the same rate per ton in terms of the average price. But we, we raised the concern that the cost of production for small scale farmers is higher than that of a commercial farmer. So by that model alone, there's, there's, the small scale farmers fall on the, on the cracks. They fall on the way because the, 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 their income could not cover their operational costs. So uh, this intervention was introduced to them as a top up payment. Uh, in fact, it's split into two now with the additional funds that have been put into that intervention. There's one that enhances their payment during the season. And then there's one also paid end of November. Where, so there's 87 million split into 44 plus 43. It goes to small scale farmers to assist their cash flow crisis because their cost of production are always higher than that of commercial farmers. They are feathers from the mills in terms of transport. They are also, it costs them more in terms of the access to inputs as well as the actual operations because they're relying on contractors. There's a difficult part, even as far as the DRD is concerned, that they are reliant on contractors to service their cane. So access to the mills is also one of their biggest challenges. But I'm saying that intervention was brought in to assist the cash flow of small scale farmers. It has had significant impact, just like what the premium price has done. Obviously, we are trying to tailor make now something that would be a long term, not something that would be uh, coming as interventions, but something that would be a long term in terms of the payment model. There's this Igusasa task team trust him that the industry has actually delegated responsibility to deal with the long-term sustainable payment model for small-scale farmers. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Th thanks, um, uh, Mr. Madlala, for that, I mean, response. And now coming to the questions from uh, Honorable Mzoaki, um, I think there's a question around, again, the daily rateable deliveries. I want to give more responses around this issue. And I know MEFAPS, in terms of task team number three, especially to support the small scale growers around the challenges that they have um, on the, I mean, um, 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 milling, um, uh, on the milling issues, especially when they have to deliver their cane and some of the milling um, companies, unfortunately, cannot uh, mill or uh, crush 
uh, the, the, their sugar cane on time. Uh, I know regulations are going to address this issue, but I think as part of task team number three, we have requested uh, that they need to look at this issue and mainly to propose, I think, a um, recommendation to the executive oversight so that this issue can be addressed because it means that farmers, they are losing money uh, along the way. Uh, 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 Mefabs, can I give it to you, the issue around the shrinking milling capacity as well as the, the rateable deliveries of, of, of sugar canes uh, by small-scale farmers? Thanks. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, um, Mrs. McCartia. Um, Honourable Chairperson, these are issues which I think the millers could also come in with because when the the sugar industry agreement was first developed, challenges were not clearly seen in this direction. And now what we are doing is we do have a survey to investigate, inquire into this and how best we can address it. But first of all, I think with the millers, uh, we what the small cane growers didn't want is just to rely on um, the kindness of a milling company company to say, we'll crush your cane. They wanted it to be clearer. On the other hand, there was a recognition that when you legislate things, it's very difficult to tweak them afterwards. But we, I believe that we are beginning to converge. That is on the one side, the millers, on the other side, the cane grows, which includes SAFTA. But we do need to understand that while commercial growers can withstand the rateable deliveries, the, uh, I mean, the commercial, the small cane growers just simply don't have the cash flow. So we need a far more systemized um, approach, and um, which is why some members did want to see this amended in legislation itself. But I do suggest we also approach the millers on this, and also the small cane growers. I see Dr. Siabunga's hand is up. Dr. Matlala. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairperson. Um, <clears throat> this is a thorny issue to us, uh, Chairperson. Uh, as I've indicated that last year, uh, though exacerbated by the unrest maybe, uh, that over tw almost 200,000 tons of small scale farmers came could not be crushed. What the daily rate will deliver it does is that it takes the milling season, okay, it takes the total, total tonnage for the season that you're going to deliver and divide it um, according to the milling season uh, in terms of the days that you can deliver your cane in. So it works perfect for commercial farming because it leaves you with economic activities that, or, or rather efficient activities to deliver your cane throughout the milling season every day uh, according to your allocation. But it is impossible for small-scale farmers to deliver cane according to that uh, uh, dispensation and according to that legislation. The legislation currently leaves the risk with the small-scale farmers that if you do not deliver your cane, there is nothing to fall back on because the legislation currently favors a commercial farmer. And the debate we are having at an industry level is that we are contrary to it. Um, there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's a worry that millers feel that they may be left to risk because then if they don't, they don't crash the small scale growers cane, it would mean then they can be sued or anything like that. But I think what we have currently protects commercial farmers as well as millers at the expense of small scale farmers. In fact, we just term it, it's an exclusionary clause because just by virtue of that clause, the, the 200,000 tons of cane that was not delivered last year means uh, some thousands or hundreds of households which never received their cane check and could not participate even in the transformation interventions we are talking about. Whilst the 90% has enjoyed and celebrated, but we cry for this, this, this 10% because that's how they fall out of their business. If you don't deliver a stick of cane in a season, how do you pay for your yearly expenses of even having the cane in the first place? So it, there's also a higher risk of that cane being, being bent out of season uh, for the small-scale farmer. They are farming on communal land. It could be grazed by cattle. So there's a high risk for them to even carry out over any cane. So what we are appealing for is the change of legislation to be in favor of small-scale farmers, protect the weak. Currently, the law protects the, the, the strong that can negotiate for themselves. The weak are left destitute. And that's what I'm saying. 
for this one we can't be really negotiating it because it's a transformation in it's a transformation decision that has to be made here to protect the most vulnerable let the, let the commercial farmers then find a way to to, to work around the, the the legislation that will, pro, will be pro and protecting small scale farmers so this is why we are inviting intervention because uh, if we leave it to, to 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 chance last year we did that we left it to the good heart and the goodwill of commercial farmers and the millers 200,000 tons were still left in the in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the countryside and never crashed. So we need a direct and deliberate intervention, just like how we got the recognition of SAFTA. The, the contrary to it would be to leave it to the to the willingness. And what happens if there's no willingness? Then that means the cocoa will be left destitute and no one will be protecting them. That is why it can't be left to industry alone. And we would appeal on on that's why we wrote to the portfolio committee, we wrote to the minister to intervene on this one because if it's left to us, the status quo remains. As, and for as long as it remains, it doesn't affect the commercial farmer nor the miller, but the small scale farmer remains uh, at risk. And come year end, there'll be those farmers who'll be crying that they never delivered anything. So that is why we are not, uh, not taking it lightly. Indeed, there's an industry process, but it can take two years and three years if, if anyone vetoes it and never agrees to it. So we can't allow for that uh, situation. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Mr. Mushawli. Uh, this is a very hot topic, <laughs> members. Is, and, uh, yes, it is a hot topic, but I must indicate that um, we are dealing with it in terms of the different, I mean, task teams, especially the task team that is looking at the restructuring of the industry, task team number eight, as well as task team number three, which is small scale grower support master plan, uh, which is led by both uh, as, as SASA as well as MEFAPS. So definitely, uh, I see the regulations, in amendments of the regulations are the only, is the only way in terms of resolving this issue, as it actually talks to the transformation of the industry. But if there's any inputs maybe from the millers around this issue of the swinging milling capacity, especially at the time where farmers, they are really in need to make sure that their sugar cane is crushed uh, timelessly. Uh, I'm not sure, Rolf, do you want to add from the miller side anything? Uh, I know for a fact that this issue is under, I mean, discussion. But let me, uh, uh, through your uh, permission, give it to Rolf from the milling uh, companies. Mr. Lutke. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, it's, it certainly is a, a bit of a thorny issue. Um, perhaps some context will also assist um, with, with the debate and, and perceptions of the, this particular problem. Uh, firstly, it doesn't affect all millers. Um, it, it only affects about three or four of the 14 mills. Uh, the rest uh, have got uh, solutions uh, in place. Uh, and the, the number of small growers and the tonnage involved uh, is comfortably handled. The, the second point I want to make is everybody agrees, including millers, that no individual grower can deliver rateably. Uh, it's, it's simply not possible. So we're all on board with that, and we all agree with that point. Um, the challenge comes in when groupings of small growers uh, need to be allocated uh, delivery tonnages um, and, and how to get that into the mill in years such as this, uh, where we have exceptional rain, exceptional weather, and new varieties that are doing very well. If we go back over the past decade, uh, this wasn't a problem because the dry weather meant that all millers needed all the cane out there. So it, it's a periodic issue, and no doubt in future years, the problem would, would go away. Uh, the third point um, is that you know those few millers who are grappling with this point um, have to deal with, with logistical challenges uh, cane quality issues, uh, and also the risk of downtime in the event that they have to deal with large quantities uh, of, of small grower cane that, that isn't delivered in a controlled manner. Now, of course, the expectation is that the mill group boards would in, ensure that it is delivered in a controlled manner, but the, the current proposals on the table don't address that, uh, and those issues need to be sorted out. Um, in addition, um, the, there is a clear and obvious uh, creation of liability for millers uh, if the proposed changes were, were simply adopted. Um, millers have to take that into account. They, they can't create uh, liabilities that, that create problems on the one hand, um, and, but provide solutions to, to small-scale growers on the others. So that balance has to be found, and, and we simply aren't there yet. Um, and then the, uh, I think... 
finally, there, there's certainly a willingness to, to find a solution to this problem. Uh, we certainly understand the problem that, that lack of rateability uh, creates. Uh, we feel there are solutions that can be considered other than legislative changes. Uh, and these include putting the, any small grower who isn't able to deliver his cane into pocket for that. Um, and there are various options that, that we're discussing. But I don't think the intention today is to go into the detail other than to ensure the, the portfolio committee that the matter is being looked at, it is being taken seriously, and, and hopefully we can find a solution. Mr. Fung, did you want to add? I saw your hand. Yeah, chairperson, thank you. I, I just wanted to say exactly what Mr. Bitker said. And okay. um, I, I believe there is a process underway that will find a solution immediately. Um, and uh, the legislative changes might take a lot longer than that. So we're quite yeah. positive about it. Yeah, because I think we do need to find a solution because I also heard Mr. Lutke saying that um, we're not there yet, you know? So I think um, members have spoken on time frames and giving the committee some comfort in saying where you think you are in, in in those plans. Um, I see, is it Dr. Sibias? Uh, okay. Sibia, Chair. Okay. okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, no, I just want to make a, a follow up comment as well, Chair, uh, from the SAFTA side. Uh, there is a letter that we wrote to, to you, Chair, and the Portfolio Committee about this matter, in which we were detailing the frustrations that we've had in the industry around this matter of uh, rateable deliveries for small-scale farmers. We've, we, we've, we've discussed the matter in various structures, at council, mill group boards, um, the committee, there is a committee within SASA that's called amendments to, to the sugar industry agreement. We, we, there's nothing that has been agreed right now. So I cannot sit here and, 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 and agree that there is a solution um, that is being crafted because that's not the case. As we speak right now, small-scale farmers they forfeited a revenue of 95 million last season. Nobody in the industry is talking about that as to how we're going to assist these small scale farmers. So it is not true that there is something that is being worked out. And I also do not agree with the uh, assertion that uh, the legislative change will take too long. That is not the case. Here we're talking about regulations, Chair, the, the, uh, the, the, the sugar industry agreement of 2000, that the minister can just in a stroke of a pen um, um, uh, tweak a clause or two to allow for small scale growers not to be subjected to the DRDs and making sure that their sugar cane is crushed in any giving season. Whether that affects all millers or some of them, but those who are affected, they are a large number and it affects a lot of households on the countryside. And it's not something that you cannot ju just brush aside easily and say, no, there's a solution. It doesn't affect everybody. I do not agree with that sentiment, Chair. We need an urgent solution for this. Otherwise, our farmers are going to suffer again this season. Thank you, Dr. Matala. We do have your correspondence. We're busy processing it. Um, so it's not as if we are ignoring um, your request. So we will come back to uh, SAFTA on, on, on that matter. But I think um, it's good for us to hear everybody's voice as a portfolio committee on these matters. Uh, so thank you for your input also. Um, Ms. Simclauli. Um, and, and thank you, honorable members and honorable chair. I think the last, I mean, questions were from honorable what were just comments. I think EDG will deal with them like timeframes, which are very important in terms of the implementation of the master plan. That um, we also need to look at the impact study on the sugar tax. We will definitely look at that. And then I think there was quite a detailed explanation around um, the biofuels program and some of the diversification, I mean, options that we are proposing. And then the question around the expropriation of land, I think that is a, a question that is related to Delrat. And unfortunately, they are not here with us. Um, but I think um, a Deputy Minister has managed to cover those issues around um, uh, land, um, especially the issues around um, access to land for the black farmers. Um, thanks, uh, Chair. Can I then hand 
over to my DDG, DDG Lerato, just to uh, sort of respond to one or two questions and sum it up, and then thereafter back to the Deputy Minister. Thank you so much, um, I think, uh, conveners for, I mean, comprehensive, I mean, responses. I must indicate that, Chair, without these conveners, I mean, this work would have been very tough, I think, for us, but with the cooperation from private sector, from business, I mean, uh, as well as the SASA and the industrial users, they are making our work very easy in terms of implementing of this master plan. As you would know, master plan is a social compact. Uh, we need to make sure that we work with um, all the partners in the sugar industry to resolve some of the immediate as well as long-term challenges that the industry is facing. Thank you so much, uh, um, honorable members and chair, as well as deputy minister. I'll hand over back to uh, the, the, the DDG Lerato. Thanks. Uh, as we hand over to the DDG, I just wanted you, we also received correspondence from the South African Sugar Converters Association. Um, I know that they are not part of your uh, delegation here today, but um, in their correspondence to us in uh, asking, requesting to meet with the portfolio committee, they, 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 um, they spell out their challenges, which is um, the, the, the high cost of sugar. So, I mean, that's all part of the, the value chain of, of uh, sugar. And I think, you know, we looking at a job retention and job creation. I think we must, in our next discussion, just bring uh, the sugar converters also in, into, um, into the presentation and um, hear what their challenges are. Um, over to you, uh, DDG. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, I was actually going to make a comment with the overall closing observations. Um, but I think to respond to Honorable Tswaku's um, concern, very, very valid concern around whether or not we've got timelines. Uh, we do have a 12-month uh, work program that we've set for ourselves, a summary of which is in the last two slides of the presentation. So hopefully that will give some sort of guidance of what we plan to conclude in the short space of two uh, of 12 months. It's quite an involved uh, work program that will be led by the different task teams um, and uh, will be guided by, by the different conveners. So I thought, let me make that uh, quick observation. Um, and thank you, Chair, for, for raising some of the other concerns that are coming from industry. Would certainly appreciate having them so that we can deal with, with a number of industry concerns under the master plan structures and also under the Executive Oversight uh, Council, which then brings it brings in um, political leadership as well from the different departments uh, and other industry bodies to, to, to resolve the issues. So we'd certainly welcome um, having a sense of those issues and responding through the master plan um, task team and EOC structures. Thank you very much, Chair. I see Honorable Nswaku saying that uh, there's two questions that are not answered. Which two questions are those, uh, Honorable Nswaku? No, thank you, Chair. Uh, the, there was a critical question of saying that, uh, uh, what is the view in terms of, uh, the, the view of actually using a smaller meal yes, rather okay. than probably having that one there? Um, what is their view? Are they intending, you know, you know, like as an immediate, you know, you know, the solution? Because I can hear uh, Mr. Thomas Fuke and uh, Yon Yago, I think, look, they're just like, you no know, playing games and they're trying to dilly-dally around the issue. They're the problem. They are saying that I'm trying to give him a solution instead okay, of giving the big ask you, instead of, instead of taking us through, just highlight the two questions. I didn't and want then to the, open up a, a, another then, debate now. And then the other question was to say, on the, diversif on the diversification, what is their uh, thing is, what is in there for the small scale farmers? I didn't actually get that. Okay, Thanks. yeah, they did, they did speak about diversification, but not with a specific um, focus the small scale on farmers, yes. Farm. Okay, okay, can I just ask DDG, as you are wrapping up, if you can, um, just cover those two 
two issues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and thank you, Honorable Taku. I, on the issue of small scale um, farmers broadly, um, I think part of our work program uh, includes um, doing a full survey of the needs of small scale farmers. Um, and we want to draft a, a strategy and a clear program of action that will be very multifaceted to address the needs of small scale farmers. Um, so issues of uh, diversification that we're talking about today um, will have to be covered. So I think it's part of the ongoing work that we have set for ourselves uh, for the 12 month program. So I would be getting ahead of, of ourselves as it were, uh, honorable chair. Um, if we begin to kind of posit answers. Um, so we are busy finalizing the program of action and the support strategy so that we can have a sustainable um, solution and sustainable intervention for small scale farmers. I think to, re to reiterate the minister and the deputy minister's sentiment um, that small scale uh, growers are fundamental to the industry. Uh, basically, they're the foundation. So, so with that principle in mind, uh, we are looking at a clear support strategy uh, for the long term. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, can I hand over to the Honorable Deputy Minister? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Salo, I think someone needs to wants to, to, to come in. I'm not sure whether should I continue. Yes, um Ms. Ntuli, did you want to um speak before the deputy ministers? It's just that I was allowing the Ms. Mshauli to point out who must respond. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Slalo. No, I just wanted to add something as uh, also a, a goer before a deputy a minister, and I thought it did even before uh, the DG, uh, Ms. Lerato. No, I uh, met them, uh, uh, Slalo. Uh, thank you now, uh, deputy chair, Abbas and all. Uh, the stakeholders, I just wanted because I'm also part of the meeting. My name is Dipu Duli, uh, previously uh, advantage a uh, farm, black farmer. I'm also a small farmer uh, and also a member of a king was. I'm also farming the rural area of follows in the in Gonyama Trust land, and it has challenges because. Uh, uh, no financial institution can render uh, you as a farmer any financial assistance because you don't have e into a PTO. And also, I think I would also like to welcome into a sugar industry master plan. But uh, I, I feel that it is moving at a very uh, a slow uh, pace. Well, if it was moving faster, maybe now some of our small scale growers could uh, could be reaping the benefits of being uh, of, of of the master plan. And the food to Umuntu Moba, we are listening. Uh, I would also like to 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 uh, to, 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 to thank the comments on Araba uh, Bumbuyani, the Honorable Mr. Bumbuyani on sugar tax, and also uh, accepting our invitation. And after all the challenges we had of COVID-19, small scale growers, unrest floods, and the sugar tax, of which we, uh, we don't need no exemption, uh, it's really good. It needs a lot of departments. But at the end of the day, we need its eradication because it's destroying uh, uh, jobs of our people. And the other thing now we are facing is the issue of uh, Ukraine versus Russia which has affected growers uh, maybe indirectly. It is indeed causing havoc because the price of the inputs, which are fertilizers, has hiked like, uh, I don't know, which will result in low production because we can't afford to buy uh, the fertilizer. And the fuel price has also made it very difficult uh, to, 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 to cultivate. In instances like this, we always support, why right? always support local, always say local is like it. And again, on the comments of uh, Honorable Mdini, 
Uh, I think uh, time is very limited on these platforms. Hence, as can growers, we have uh, extended the olive branch and invited uh, the portfolio committee to our offices so that we can, uh, 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 you can have insight on what uh, actually we are doing on matters of uh, the, the, the sugar tax and all those uh, uh, things met, uh, which are matters of concern which we can deliberate and come with a solution together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Ntuli. There we heard it from the horse's mouth as we speak. And local is indeed lacquer. Uh, over to you, Deputy Minister. Thank you, Ms. Ntuli. Thank you very much, Jefferson. Thank you very much for all the comments, the inputs from the industry, inputs from the portfolio committee members of which we always say we always get very informative and uh, useful comments and suggestions and the guidance that we always need as the, the department. I think we all agree, Chairperson, as to say when it comes to the issues of transformation, of the industry we still have a lot to do but there's so much again that we have done but we need to be very much deliberate there's so much work that i'm saying task task team four needs to look at and for me that's one area where we did not, not be shy but we all need to roll up our sleeves and say what is it that we do to transform this industry uh, the broader participation of black people really, as it has been mentioned, I think we all agree with that. When it comes to women enterprises development, as that has been mentioned, the issues of youth, that is where we need to be deliberated, I'm saying very targeted and focused. So we, we, we truly agree with that one. On the issue of legislation, really, there's so much that has been uh, uh, pinpointed and highlighted of which the portfolio committee members and together with the department and the ministry, those are the things that we need to look at and say what best can we do to change wherever we can change for the betterment and the beneficial of our all the people that take part in this. As I'm saying again, that's the deliberate one that we need to focus on to change the lives of the people that have been previously disadvantaged. And I think also, I just want to talk to the issue of climate change of which I think each and every day we get a wake up call, we get, we learn lessons every day. And it's one area on the study that is, uh, they are embarking on that we need to have the direction and get into a conclusion as to say, what is it that we can do in future to, to, to protect ourselves as farmers when it comes to the issues of climate change? Because what we're coming from, the period we are coming from now, really it is, as I'm saying, these, the, we are learning these lessons almost every day, and it's one area really where the studies must be done, even at the level of the department, is the thing that we need to look at and we are looking at is to see what is it that we can do looking at the way climate is. And I think that one talks directly to the fact that the issue that has been raised on the silos, the, 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 the manner that we work in as departments, I can say, Chairperson and the members of the Portfolio Committee, that Yes, we might not have reached that stage where we are saying we want to reach, but I, I think slowly and surely we, 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 we are getting into that mode of having the departments working together in making sure that we resolve some of these challenges that we are, we are faced with. Coming to the issue of the transformation agenda, Department of Health, Department of Agriculture, a DTIC talking to Treasury really now and again we have those meetings to say how do we approach most of the challenges and some of the challenges that we are faced with and I can say we are really trying by all means to break down those walls uh, that lead us to work in silos but I we fully understand and we, we, we accept that there is more that we need to do moving forward because it even talked to the issue of 
HPL as it has been highly raised in this meeting, of which really with the, as the departments that are concerned, we are working together as to say what is it that can be done. But the assurance as to say we are still committed to what we committed to when we started this master plan, when it comes to this three-year plan that we are having, those commitments still stands because at the end of the day, that is what we want to see. The, 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 this industry being 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 transformed. So for me, Chairperson, for now, is just to thank everyone that has been here, thank all the stakeholders, the role players within the industry, and saying there is a lot of things that we still need to do in making sure that we reach the stage where we want to reach to as per our master plan and the discussions and the deliberations that we always have. Very soon, as I've said, uh, the minister have also said we are going to have our executive uh, oversight committee meeting and we are going to be owning out uh, many of the issues even of what we, 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 we have uh, uh, even started to, to talk to or on this portfolio committee that you are in here. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and thank you very much to everyone, especially the honorable members, members of the portfolio committee. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy, Honorable Deputy Minister for leading this team and for leading us in this very robust and valuable discussion that we have had as portfolio committee members together with the stakeholders in the industry and with the department. Uh, we, we realize that we do have a lot, as you have said, Deputy Minister, we have a lot, uh, lot of work to do so to advance uh, transformation in the sector. So I think as a portfolio committee, we, um, we welcome the invitation. We have not uh, fully oversighted the sector, the sugar industry sector, because we went to, uh, after the July unrest, we did go to Tonga to Hewlett, uh, but obviously that was just to assess the, uh, the losses uh, incurred. In the, in the sector during the unrest. So I think we will put it on the agenda of this committee together with um, the challenge to break down silos, not only between departments, but even portfolio committees of, of, of parliament. And uh, we will then arrange a joint um, portfolio committee meeting and have engagements on, on on, on, on this presentation that we've had, and also, uh, of course, um, to oversight. Um, I think uh, we have taken note of all the, the, the inputs made here. We know that there's a lot of um, hanging issues, things that we have to, to keep our finger on uh, as we uh, go forward and look forward to our next joint meeting. Um, uh, as a portfolio committee. Um, I think we will just keep uh, speaking to each other. We've noted many important things as such as the regulations and the legislation, the Sugar Act, etc. So um, thank you very much uh, to, to, uh, to everyone on this platform. Can I just ask uh, our, our portfolio committee secretary to speak on our next meeting? Um, Chairperson, our next meeting is tomorrow starting at nine o'clock and we will be looking at, we will start our deliberations on the Copyright Amendment Bill Chair. Members <coughs> receive those documentation on Friday evening. Also, we intend to formally consider the Budget Vote Report Chair. I will also resend that Budget Vote Report to members uh, um, for the Information Chair. That's the program for tomorrow, Chair. Thank you that. Thank you very much to everyone. Have a good day further and please be safe. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Fabs. It was good to see you. <laughs> you too. And congratulations on your deployment. Oh, I'm very much sure. Recording nice stuff. seeing you, Ms. Fabs, again. <laughs> oh, and you too. Yeah. Congratulations to you, Ms. Fabs. <laughs> Thank you, so much. Thank you.
Sa team of Lung is surrendered by a front team.